All right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the last day of the No Majors Club, the last day of the Major by extension. It is the final. Uh, and man, I don't think we're in for a particularly great time, especially if you're an Avangar fan. It is, of course, Astralis versus Avangar. Crazy story here at the what has been one of the strangest majors, I think. Certainly the strangest since Krakow. Uh, we have a huge underdog in the final, a 98% underdog, according to Pickham's uh, of Anger. Um, incredible story for them to make it this far in the tournament. Uh, Sam's feeling pretty good because he had them as a, what was it, a dark horse, I believe you said, that yeah. was like a good outside pick. Uh, he said they were definitely going to make top four. They're in the final now. But unfortunately, what happens when you make it to the final of a bracket that was ridiculously skewed? Uh, it means you get some sort of proto-monster waiting for you in the final. That's going to smash your brains in. And that's what Astralis are. Because right now, probably 
coming out of the player break, the only team that I have seen, uh, the only top team at least, that looks well drilled, looks to be punching above their weight, looks to have, have sort of put the work in, is Astralis. They've swept through all the other big names in their half of the bracket to be here. And I honestly see this final as a layup. I could see this being a very one-sided affair, a clear 2-0 in my book. And probably we're in the realm of 16-6, no matter what maps uh, come out. Uh, we have got the veto, I believe, coming in. Is that right, Davey? We've got that? The maps have been no, decided? It hasn't, it hasn't been, it's not on HLTV I don't yet, think they've done it yet. Oh, right. I think, well, sorry. I, th I think some people were talking about the maps. I don't know if there's been a leak. So we are waiting for the vetoes to be confirmed. We don't know what maps that are, that, that are going to be. Davey, this is where I throw over to you and use your player expertise. Uh, what maps do you think we're going to see? Well, I mean, it really just depends on both teams, like how they've been vetoing this tournament so far in comparison to like normal. Like everything's just a, a, a little bit weird as far as Astralis goes. But um, mm. they're still doing their... Um, like they've shown that they're super comfortable on Vertigo. But I don't think Avangar is actually going to let them go there. I think Avangar is going to ban Vertigo. Like I, I can't see with how Astralis manhandled Liquid the other day. Liquid is one of the best teams in the world on Vertigo, by the way. Like they had, mm -hmm. a, they were, they were like six and zero on the map coming into this event. So, yeah, uh, I think that we're going to see a Vertigo. I think they're doing the vetoes right now, like on the mainstream too. Like I think they're actually doing it right now. Um, okay, keep keep an eye on that. I mean, that's been an interesting development, right? We've been talking a lot about. Um, which team is going to really sort of come out and be the one that that accepts that Vertigo is here to stay, uh, you know, maybe bar one or two tweaks, and they're going to put it into their map pool and master it. Mouse Sports have looked great on it so far. I would have said probably before this development with Astralis, one of the best teams, if not the best team. Now Astralis have clearly come in with with uh, the ace up their sleeve of being very comfortable on Vertigo. They they battered Team Liquid on Vertigo, made it look very easy. I think it was 16-8. Uh, two great halves from yeah, them on that map. Yeah, CT side too, which was yeah. like huge. So obviously it gets harder for uh, for a team like Avanga who maybe doesn't have the fullest map pool to, well, to sort of find some uh, uh, place where they can hide. Yeah, and they have. There's a lot of map pool like overlap here too. Like both teams play Dust Two and Inferno. Both teams, it's their most common map. So I think we're gonna see. Yeah, wait. So they're just showing it right now. You think a train uh, would so, come on here? So Avangar ban Nuke, uh, Astralis ban Mirage, which is their perma ban, and then Astralis yeah. picked Inferno, which is the overlap there. And I think we're probably gonna see um, Avangar pick uh, pick Inferno. It's just what makes the most sense, like as far as both teams. Oh, they actually picked us too. So, oh, sorry, Astralis picked Inferno. Yeah, and then Avangar is gonna pick D two. Mm -hmm. So, because that's both which... the teams' two main maps. I was and just going to say, the, the, the Dust 2 pick makes a lot of sense. Avangar have felt very comfortable playing that. We've actually seen Astralis ban that against better Dust 2 teams. It's probably as good a chance as any that they have of getting the upset. Yeah, that being be said, past the side or two. <laughs> that being said, I, I don't think that's going to happen because let's not forget the, the defeats that Astralis have had on Dust 2 have generally come against teams that were kind of almost specializing on that map. You know, they were struggling against the Team Liquids of this world. I don't know if Avangar have that firepower. Lots of storylines coming in as well. I mean, a lot of people obviously focus on Jame. I think with Dust2 being a map, we are going to see big responsibility on his shoulders. But let's just talk a little bit about some of the features of this team. That You know, Quicket has been great uh, this tournament. I, I think he's really, really stood out. There was an interview from him uh, where he said he actually turned down Na'Vi. And he was glad that he did it. Um, to yeah. be here in the final with this team. So takes an absolute lot of stones to sort of say no to a big organization in, in the CIS region uh, like Na'Vi, one that you know is going to be paying the salary, not getting involved in all kinds of crazy fuckery. At least the money's going to turn up every month. And, of course, the prestige and the status. Uh, to sort of say no to Na'Vi takes balls of steel and a lot of people see Quicket as somebody that is sort of destined to play on Na'Vi no matter what happens here. Obviously, well, if a Vanguard do, <laughs> yeah, if a Vanguard do the biggest upset in major history today, I don't think that's true anymore. Also, I've got to say, this Sanji guy, I think he's had like the best tournament of his professional career. Um, you know, here at the major, I, I think he's just been exceptional in what he, how he's augmented this team, their firepower, sticking to his roles. And when you round that out with someone as experienced as Adren, somebody who's got a major under his belt, 
somebody who can obviously talk to these more inexperienced players and tell them like this ain't no thing. It's it's just another best of three guys. Buster's played particular, you know, he's played well in fits and starts. It's not like a Vanguard, you know, don't have the pieces to be able to win a best of three. That being said, over on Astralis, for me, the story probably has been not just that the system's working, they've got new tactics, new map pull, all of that sharpness when it comes to their utility usage is there. I mean, their utility usage, this major, has been back to what it was before. Absolutely flawless. Smokes, flashes, Molotovs, the, the timing. They always seem to have one as well when they need it for a situation. It's just a, it's just a hallmark of this Astralis team. And on top of that, you know, where, when, when Ziwoo fell off and Simple fell off and they were the big star players that everyone was talking about coming in, Mr. Consistency himself, Device, easily the MVP, in my opinion, um, of this Astralis run, just putting out great numbers, consistently clutching, pretty much single-handedly won them train against NRG the other day uh, with that amazing pistol clutch, not to mention several others over the course of the tournament. And, of course, Zipnix himself, the old wily head, showing that he can still come up clutch for his team. Magisk, Dupree, it's really hard to look past Astralis here, uh, winning the major and uh, like just overall, and Device winning a well-deserved MVP for me. Yeah, I really do think that one thing that's super underrated about a Vanguard, though, is their, actu is their, is their utility usage. Mm. Because every single player on their team has incredible flash stats. Like, they all have a super high flash rating. They all have super high success rates. And these guys, even when you're watching them play, there's not a lot of, like, there's not a lot of mistakes made by them. Like, they play a really solid CT side game. They have a lot of aggressive plays that they work together to do. They have good setups. They have good crossfires. Like, they're a really solid team on CT side, and the way that they use their, their utility is actually really underrated because of the overperformance of some of their players. Um... When you're looking at the, like their actual team, like Buster, Buster and Jame are obviously the the two main guys. Like Buster mm -hmm. and Jame are they're, they're they're the two main guys. They're the guys who are gonna need to keep up their form. And like you were saying, if Sanji or Kicker, if either one of them can just put up a good performance here, they actually can give Astralis like I, th I think they they could give Astralis a pretty good game. It is dependent though on one of those two, Sanji or Kicker, stepping up and having a good game, and Adren just not being bad because yeah. he's been pretty poor so far actually. Yeah, it, it kind of makes me wonder what role that Adren is, is, is sort of fulfilling in this team uh, right now because, you know, uh, it, it, he's he's almost like, he, you know, he kind of feels like he should be doing the you know the in-game leadership role with the, st with the stats that he's posting and the experience that he has um, and not really doing a lot else that sort of justifies his sort of position in the team. But again, it it you know, there's a lot that goes on in in a team that we don't see, that we don't know about. I have no idea. Avangar is a team that they reg they've regularly swapped in game leader. They regularly swap in game leader across maps, even sometimes halves. You know, they've said in interviews, uh, Jane would call one half and Quicket would call the other in the past. So this is a team that's very fluid, I suppose, in 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 what roles people are doing. So maybe that's reflective of why Adrian's had a particularly poor major. I still think here in a final where it doesn't matter whether you've got ice in your veins or not, if you're a massive underdog like a Vanguard, the occasion is going to get to you. Yeah. This is this is where Adrian comes into his own, I think. Yeah, well, you'd hope so. Influence, you know? Yeah, that's what you'd hope that he would have like he'd have that experience, that calming factor, be able mm. to like tell them like, look, guys, there's no pressure on us here. Like everybody expects them to win. Like we have nothing to lose. All we have to do is go out there and and play play our best, and we actually can beat them. And nobody expects us to. So like win or lose here, like what what we've done is great. Let's stay calm. Let's stay in the game. Let's stay focused. And maybe they can act. Maybe they can actually cause an upset. Maybe they can give them a good game. You know, like it, I think I think if Vanguard comes out of this series and they've given them a good game and they've played well and they've made it close, at the end of the day, I don't think they're going to be disappointed with what they've done. So I'll open it up to the floor, obviously, just to let everybody know who we've got on uh, in the channel today. Uh, Dust has turned up. He keep he keeps saying goodbye, and he, he's always he's always it's here. My last ever always... appearance. I'm back in the game. I'm doing my yeah, yeah. Uh, 
I'm just doing my best Vince impression, you know, uh, just <laughs> in and out, you know what I mean? He, he's back in the game. Yeah, well, mate, yeah. According, according to what you typed in my Twitch chat the other day, you've been having lots of in and out, mate. So uh, congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. God, there it is. Big round of applause for Dusty's had sex, guys. A big round of applause. There it is. Great job, buddy. Great job, buddy. Big round of applause. Great job, buddy. I've subjected myself to this. Because you, you anyway. fucking love it, Dusty. You love it. Yeah, it is. Uh, Flum is, uh, is joining us as well. Uh, Eric. Eric, are you there, buddy? Say uh, hi. I am here. Hello. Good morning. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, I'm going to be very interested to get your insights. Uh, pay particular attention to Jane, please. I want to get uh, an overall assessment uh, from you about his orping performance, since as you are a premier caliber orper yourself. Uh, so <laughs> I am I am uh, definitely looking forward to that. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I just uh, shipped that yeah. off a little bit. <laughs> no, uh, obviously. Rich. Yo, the only what's up, reason Doug? why I came was so I, w I can safely claim that I've been to every day of the No Majors Club, two No Majors Clubs in a row. Oh, okay. I get it. I get it. I'm so I had, I had to get the streak in, you know. Uh, that's what it was. That's Can't all. stay for long. but <laughs> No, no. Hey, I'm, I'm glad you're here, buddy. Uh, Jackie uh, swooping in. Um, we were we were up late last night leveling dwarfs together. So Getting our grind on. Yeah, Getting our grind on. Dwarf buddies. Yeah. <laughs> dwarf buddies. Is your dwarf's <laughs> name Warwick Davis? <laughs> It yeah, actually is. Yeah. yeah, he's he's <laughs> nice. actually got a character called Warwick Davis on our server, um, and of course SEO Gnome Mage Club, which I thought was pretty good play That's on right. Yeah, uh, he's he's done good. You know, it's it's so sad that he's going to die of huh? Lyme disease. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be sad when he goes, but um, for now, uh, you know, he's going to be um, helping level up. So that's good. Sam obviously pressing the buttons, uh, and then we've got Seaside. Uh, good good that you joined us again. Are you drinking this morning, Seaside? Gone. He's he's, yeah, he's already blacked out. He's, he's already blacked yeah. out. Uh, there yeah. you go. You try and set these kids up, eh? And they just let you down every time. Now I know how his dad feels. And uh, we got <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> and we got Vince, of course. Vince, uh, not at the major. He should have been, but he's here with us in the No Majors Club. Uh, how are you doing today, buddy? That's very kind of you, dude. I'm doing well. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, my man. Who you got winning this one? Then I'm guessing it's uh, it's the juggernaut of Astralis rolling over a Vanguard in your uh, your scenario, right? Well, I put a tweet out saying who's going to win Astralis 2 0 or Astralis 2 1. A bunch of people got super butt hurt. <laughs> so that was good. Uh, yeah, I think Astralis is steamrolling this. I, I, I was listening to what you guys were talking about, but it never fills me with confidence when it's maybe ifs and buts. The, what we know is that Astralis, yes, they had their dip, mainly because they shot themselves in the foot, let's be honest. They've got plenty of experience. They're the better team. They've got better individual players. Surely this is theirs. Oh, this finals is going to be Trying to be man. optimistic so I don't have to fucking hate this, all right? Nah, it's going to be a Understandable. quick 2 uh, <laughs> There's no hope. We need... Huh? <laughs> Let's be realistic. <laughs> ah! Dust! <laughs> Shut up! No, Let's listen. Let's be realistic. No, no, no. Let, let, let's definitely be realistic. I, again, I, I think uh, that I just cannot see past um, Astralis here, and I, and I think it's going to be brutal. Uh, the thing I'm always worried about when I see like massive underdogs, like um, you know, get get into positions to win basically, uh, you know, unthinkable size tournaments. Uh, I almost feel that like just by virtue of getting to the the final, it's like oh, we, we've already had a final to be here. Let's all let's enjoy the occasion, guys. Let's all come out and play. Oh, well, we did lose to Astralis, so that's gonna happen. You know, I I, I kind of saw a little bit of that. I, I felt with Ents. Uh, last major, I've definitely seen it at other tournaments in the past. My worry always is that the you know the ruthless streak you need to sort of say to yourself, "Well, we deserve to win this. We are going to win this." There's like a psychological component where it's like, "Hey, it doesn't matter if we lose." And I think once that worms its way into your brain, you end up getting um, underwhelming performances yeah. because you know there's the kind of community no you're going to accept. Avoid it. Like, but... There's just no way for them to avoid it when you know, mm. you know what I mean. Like, there's just no yeah. way to go into this game as Avangar and think that that you, that you're going to win. Like, there's no. It's on the I'm positive though, right? Astralis is about to make absolute history. They're about to win three majors in a row, something no one else has ever done. And some of these players are going to win their fourth major against something no one else has ever done. So yeah. if you take the positive, and, and this is the recovery story, you know, Strauss falling off, not making any finals for ages, and now somehow they find the way in the perfect timing to come for to a major and do it again. So, I mean, that, that's pretty crazy stuff. Yeah, and, and there's just such an asterisk next to it because it's right after the player break yeah. again. Daddy read my mind. Uh, you know, I was uh, just going to say that the, the, the unfortunate thing is, sure, it's a major, but let, let's let's be real. In in terms of like the overall 
caliber that, that we've seen in terms of the level of play, it's been poor. <laughs> and um, yeah, some of the some of the teams that you ex- like, some of the series you expected to really deliver didn't. Some of the ones that you weren't expecting to deliver did. It was a bit of a you know a bit of a weird mix. And um, I think I, I think even when Astralis go on to win this major, which as I said, I think is inevitable, um, and all of that historic you know aspect comes into it, I still think. We need another tournament after this where people get back into form where we before we can really start making any protestations about, you know, is the Team Liquid era over? Mm-hmm. Do you know a Team Liquid the number one team in the world? These questions don't get answered, whatever happens this series. I think Malmo is going to tell us a lot because I think all mm-hmm. the top teams are supposed to be at that event, and that's what, like in a month? So, mm-hmm. uh, actually, probably less than that. I think it's only like maybe three weeks. Is it New York so, before that, or is it at, mid next month? Uh, yeah, but not all the top teams are at New York. I think only maybe like four or five are. Yeah, Malmo. Uh, that's like an eight team event. Yeah, Malmo is super stacked. It's almost as stacked as Cologne. So I think that event maybe will tell a little bit about mm. the Liquid era, so to speak. Because I, I, mm. I'm definitely not willing to just say it's over because of one major. Um, so we'll see, though. Yeah, I, I I completely agree with that. I mean, and look, you know, there was the other team as well. We're talking about Liquid Vitality. You know, they were right up there. Number two team in the world made changes off the back of what happened at this tournament. Now, I uh, I was asking if Nathan wanted to come on because obviously I've known Nathan many times, you know, for a long time. He's been on the stream in the past. Uh, but basically, without going into anything that we talked about, um, it, it really came out of left field for him, the move uh, of being dropped from the team. Uh, he certainly wasn't expecting it. Um, it sets up this ridiculous scenario where with Shocks also leaving G2, I think we can all put the dots together. Uh, I don't know if that's the play for Vitality. I don't even know if a roster change was required. You'd climbed up to number two in the world, doing it legit. Uh, and, you know, what happened here was people just looked like they'd come out of a player break. That was all. You've proven that when you get your hustle on, you can win tournaments and challenge the best teams in the world. So I had no idea why they felt a roster uh, change was even needed, frankly. Now, I guess it's one of those things where you don't know what's going on within the parameters of the team, like personality clashes or anything like that. I mean, Nathan's a super fucking chill good guy. Um, but, I mean, obviously, we know the French scene is a little bit temperamental at times, uh, to put it kindly. Um but if you go off performances, like he's not even close to being the worst performing player on Vitality. He was putting up some big, big games. Mm. I think, um, I, you know, I, I, I think the only explanation for me why you would drop somebody like MBK, I know he didn't have a great major. I know his stats were very poor by by the high standards he set. And he's, and he's, he's a veteran now. He is prone for that to happen from time to time. Uh, but when you think about the Vitality system, it's not, re- you know, he's the anchor guy. It's not really about numbers for him. It shouldn't be anyway. The only explanation I can think as to why you'd want to, um, you know, drop him from the team is basically because you've already got this agreement to bring Shocks in because Shocks absolutely makes it clear wherever he goes, MBK can't be there. And that 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 worries me because I just don't see, you know, sure, maybe, maybe even Zewu had a little bit to say and going like, guys, come on. <laughs> like, it can't just, I can't do this. Um, I need somebody who can augment the the firepower in this team, but um, it's you start getting the questions about like roles and who's going to play where and who's going to do what, and the balance looks a little bit off once once you put shocks into that lineup for MBK for me at least. Yeah, I was about so. to say like I'm all, I always get a little bit cynical about stuff like this though, when changes like this happen after an event where a guy just has his worst series ever and you get knocked out of the event right because he w- he had a really bad series in that knockout in their quarterfinals like it was bad you know. Mm. Mm. But like that happens, like you said, that happens. Like it's just gonna happen sometimes. But in my in my head, just having experienced CS players for the longest time and young kids who are really good, in my mind, when I see something like that happen, I think that's like in my obviously this isn't what happened, guys. I don't know if this is what happened. I'm just saying this is what I speculate that that's like Ziwu going to the ownership of the team and being like, yo, you need to bring in somebody better than this guy now. He just fucked us. He just got us kicked out of this shit. I need somebody mm. better to play with me because I can't do this by myself. You know what I mean? And then the ownership of the team is like, oh, fuck. 
and probably also MBK was probably on the highest salary on the team from when they originally formed it, right? That's yeah, another- and and it, my understanding is as, as well that um you know the, the buyout over at G two, w- which sort of did hinder MBK getting into a team and it, it you know as quick as he would have liked, you know I don't think he was a cheap acquisition by any stretch of yeah. the imagination. So, anyways, that, I, I always, th- whenever I see a quick change like that, right after you get knocked out, I always, in my head, that's always the players throwing a hissy fit. Because mm. usually, I like, even though orgs will make changes after a bad result, it's usually not something like that. Like that, what, what we saw with him is pretty rare. Yeah. The thing is, though, I, I'm not passing any judgment here. I'm just generally curious what you guys have to say about this. But obviously, Shox is a legendary player, and we all know. His, his skill ceiling is incredibly high. But is he that same player now to justify getting him in to get that, that higher skill? Do you think he would actually consistently bring a level that would actually help Sai out? Because he does go quiet quite a lot of the time, to be honest. I think yeah. he will. I mean, I don't I, even I know think if there's really other option. Yeah, like, I, th- I think he's definitely better. I don't think there's any doubt there um, as far as, like, just skill-wise. And, but personally, the person I, like, I guess, like like you were saying, Rich, if MBK and Shox will not play together 100%, like, never going to happen, then I mm-hmm. guess it makes sense, because really, the person who you should be replacing with Shox is RPK, not MBK, so... Yeah, it, yeah that's that's what I think as well, and, and but, no disrespect to RPK, but that's just, yeah, of you know, I think that's reflective of his performances uh, lately. You know, he has form and fits and starts, and it is sort of RPK's job to kind of put the numbers up, right? I mean, uh, that... That's just the reality of it, and he hasn't been doing it. But yeah, the Shox and MBK thing is irreconcilable. It's just yeah. never going to happen. They okay. tried it one last time in G2 to see if it could, they can make it work. It didn't, um, and they're never going to try it again. Um, well, yeah. You know. And I know this is like just... almost a meme at this point, like the whole like, oh, pick up Keo. Why doesn't Keo have a team? There's obviously like I've I've always been of the opinion that well, he's the rumor, that right? there must be a reason he doesn't have a team. Like there must be a reason. Like this isn't. This is there's isn't no reason why they, there's a lot of there's a lot right? of old uh bad blood that goes okay. back um you know to the to the fr- to the French scene a yeah. lot of st- a lot of unspoken well, stuff publicly if we're ignoring that shit then Keo for RPK and Shocks for NBK I think Vitality gets way better like way that, better that, that that's the rumor and honestly if you want to talk about Keo you know speaking of somebody that's had a running with Keo in, himself. Uh, which Sam probably still has filmed somewhere. Uh, the, um, the 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 reality is the Keo of like a few years ago um, is definitely not the same um, guy he you know he is now. But Keo Keo and Shocks were another supposedly irreconcilable relationship, right? You know Keo Keo said oh. he, uh, the Keo has said many times that. that he could, yeah he considered Shocks a terrible okay. teammate. Oh, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, so the the idea that like you know if they can put their differences aside, that was another one of the great divides in the French scene. If they can put their differences aside, I think they can really get something going on because unquestionably, Keo has been out to pasture for way too long. He's too good a player. He showed it in Cloud Nine. You know, honestly, every time he's been a ringer for somebody, he's looked great. Uh, he looks like he's still sharp. He can only get better by being in a structured team, playing regularly, practicing regularly, you know, a team that doesn't have a revolving fucking door policy like Cloud9 did. Um, so, yeah, I, I think if he does come in for RPK, I, I'd get excited about that lineup. I think I think Keo being there would would be able to do a lot of the roles that MBK did um, to, to, to uh, this almost the same degree of competency for me. Yeah. I'm just thinking now, like, since you said, like, since it's rumored, like, the Shocks is going to Vitality, I don't know if that's confirmed or rumored, honestly, but... All rumors at this point, but I mean... I think it's actually more likely that you see Keo go to G2. It's probably more likely that he goes there instead of Yeah, I think so, too. I think so, too. I don't know. The G2 situation's weird now, because if that rumor is true that they went after Nexon Hunter, then all of a sudden I'm starting to think that G2's looking to go international instead of staying a French team. Um... So that's the other thing you have to kind of consider. That opens up the door to anybody for the G2 organization. If well, yeah, that was own. the other thing as well. Like, why was why was Ocelot talking to um, why crazy was why players. was yeah, yeah why was Ocelot talking to crazy players? Right? Like, I mean, you know, that doesn't. I don't know how that fits in. I don't know. I feel like the, the, he probably talked to ten different teams. You know what I mean? Like, the crazy owner just happened to be the guy who went fucking nuts. So you heard about it, like. 
That, that, like, I'm sure, I'm sure that they were considering, like, oh, well, if we did want to go international, who would you guys want to play with? And they were like, oh, well, let's play with these guys. So he was like, okay, I'll go see. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm sure that doesn't mean that that's what they're doing. It just means that that was an option. I, I also think that the, um, the, the, the whole and public announcement aspect of it was really rushed. You know, like MBK, you know, basically intimated to me that it came out of left field for him. Uh, he wasn't expecting it. Uh, you know, all of it, like Nell had put a report out basically about G2 and then apparently was getting on top of the vitality thing. So I think I think the whole thing was basically just rushed. It was like a rushed announcement because they didn't yeah. want the media to get it. And, you know, so they weren't controlling the narrative. And uh, that's been the theme the whole major, though, is these quick announcements. Yeah. At least yeah, there's been a, there's been a there's been a fuck ton of like, like just weird situations. Five different ones, if you like. Yeah, we're, we're getting to a stage now where it's like I think roster changes are going to get announced while the players are on the fucking server. Honestly, it's like it's just so fucking quick, right? Um, but uh, I'm this sorry, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be banning people in the chat. Sorry, one second. What are they saying? Oh, just because people don't realize that Dust is like calling in, so they're like, "Nice hey, mic, man." So you you just like ban forever, like. <laughs> Oh, I'll bounce out if it's bad. My bad. I didn't know. No, no, no. Don't worry, dog. Fucking stay here, dude. All I right. want to hear what you got to say. Don't pander to the plebs. Yeah. Uh, how long after Vitality's exit was it Was it announced? It was like two two, two or three days, wasn't it? Yeah. The next yeah. day. I think it might have been one day. That's unreal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And wasn't it, well, I mean, he kind of confirmed to MBK did that it wasn't Zywood throwing a hissy fit anyway, kind of like in the, I mean, I know you said it was hypothetical anyway, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, a, it, that's just he what pretty much confirmed that it was like put on by Alex and Apex and then RPK and Zywood just kind of went along for the ride. This is mm -hmm. kind of what he portrayed in his little like Discord messages that got put yeah. on Reddit. Is that it was those two and then, I mean, I imagine Zywood, I don't know how RPK is, but. Zoe seems like a pretty you know quiet person, so he's probably just like, yeah, whatever. Like, I'm just I just want to kill people, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like he's just I don't know, just along for the ride. And it seems like Alex and Apex are driving it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, there was also uh, you know maybe some friction between him and the coach, right? Uh, the X, X I always get it the wrong way around. Is it X Q T D D D? We've lost him. We like yeah, him dust. Hard dust. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah dust, dust is gone. He's out of round trees. He's full round trees. He's been Epstein. Rest in peace, That's Dust <laughs> Moment of silence, guys. He's gone. Riff. But uh, That's where oh. in the back of the head. Yeah, he's been to, he's been he's been on the bunk beds. Um but yeah, X, 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 XQ uh, TZZ um, and him, I think, had a little bit of friction. And he was involved in the uh, decision-making process as well, which is interesting. I don't know how many teams honestly kind of acquiesce and give the coaches input into the roster changes. Um, but but uh, I think that's something that doesn't happen very often, you know, based on things I've seen happen in the scene and people that have left teams and stuff like that. So um, that's an interesting one. Um but yeah, I can I can totally understand why MBK would you know feel a little bit aggrieved because um, it, it it just seems to me to be very you know like I say very very it's very weird that like you know MBK is kind of like yep I totally didn't see this one coming at all like there weren't any intimations going into the tournament everything was fine and then within literally like a day or two of us crashing out. I've just found out I'm benched, <laughs> you know, and that was that was the tweet he put out. He was just like, "Yep, guess who else is getting benched?" So, definitely was surprised by the roster moves. Like I think a lot of us were. Yeah, yeah I don't he, know. He wouldn't I, have been I, my first choice. I don't. I mean, for sure. if, for sure. if you're going off stat, like name for sure, like I don't know, it's tough. Like if you go purely off stats, it's like actually pretty close. And if there was like contention between him, if you have two voices, right? Like maybe he was like, you know, causing confusion with Alex's calls, that kind of thing. Since they were doing the double IGL thing, that might be. Yeah, I think that has more to do with it than anything. Is is not even individual performance, but more or less like team dynamic and and power struggle. Yeah, he mm -hmm. might have been like continuously trying to overcall. 
Yeah, something like that, right? Like yeah, if it's if it's being led by like because Apex kind of came with MBK too, which like, I, which led me to believe that they're pretty close. And if he was the one kind of with Alex on that, then that to me kind of like at least outside looking in is like okay, well maybe there was just like some IGLing slash leadership problems that they just had to it wasn't even about stats; it was more about personality and and leadership. Yeah. Um, it, it's always going to be tough as well because, like, you know, Nathan's been around the block, right? It's not like his input's completely invalid, but I also agree. I think if, you, if you're if you an in-game leader and you ever feel undermined, it, it creates this, like, weird atmosphere in the team where people get, uh, you know, indecisive. And, and if, you know, again, I'm not saying MBK is even comparable to, like, the Ricky situation, for example, in complexity. But if you're not listening, if you're not following the instructions, then, you know, go fuck yourself, right? Like, you have got to go. Like, I mean, it's just... You, you know, you have to back the in-game leader, I think, in that situation. It's one of my pet peeves that most organizations these days, it seems, don't actually want to do that. They'll go with the star player most most of the time. Yeah, it's hard to know outside looking in, but that's what it looks like to me anyway. Yeah, right, no, I, I, think, think, I, think, I, I think that's a decent really issue. Well, Avanga, they just need to get around on the board, dudes. But they're getting absolutely <laughs> battered here. They're getting absolutely battered. Like the 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 trading by Astralis is just so fucking good here on the T side. They just can't get a yeah, numerical yeah. advantage in any like in any situation. Yep. The depressing thing as well is that Sanji's actually top fragging with nine and five, and they're still getting disrecked because no one else is stepping up. Hmm. On 162 ADR, top top kills, top ADR on server, losing 5-0, about v6-0. But this is as well. This is where you you know this is what you would expect from Astralis, right? Like they're on that T side of Inferno. They they know it's their map. They're gonna get all up in your fucking grill. You, you know what I mean? This is like this is this is the heartbreak. This is like where you just set the tone for the final. And this is what I thought was gonna you know gonna happen. That you'd see Astralis like just go like fucking ten zero up, and then maybe a Vanguard get a few, get a few rounds, and we'll, we'll, you know, and then and then we just on a map too. It's just over, and you don't have time to settle in the final. You know that's that's what you want to do for a team like uh, a Vanguard. You just don't want them to ever get comfortable. It's like this is our fucking domain. This is our territory. We belong here. You don't. Thanks for the trophy. That's still a win. He, he's cutting in and yeah, out, I was yeah. I about to tell him. We're getting a lot of feedback coming through your mic. It's either that or he's driving. His head's out the window, his phone's up. He's I need to drive. Hello. Hello. I don't know what you're doing, does it? It sounds like you're trying to communicate from out of space right now. I saved the stream, uh, stream from. All right, buddy. We heard that, though. All right, you take care. Enjoy your fucking holiday, man. I will, man. Got Have fun go. in Finland. Thanks, man. Catch you later, buddy. Bye. Dust there joining us from the International Space Station. <laughs> it's great up here. They've even got fish heads in pill form, he said. Fish head paste? <laughs> Do you believe that? <laughs> what a time to be alive. That's what we coming to the stream later. No, oh, I know. It, it, yeah, we, we'll, we've got we've got more uh, great stuff for Dust. Like, that's a good one, by the way. It's probably the static from his girlfriend's hair messing up the mic. Plenty of static <laughs> on me. <laughs> Calm down. Could be round around. Finally, no trade. Shut up, Seaside. Ding. Yeah, you fucking scumbag. <laughs> <laughs> back, it, back in the corner. <laughs> Get back in the corner, son. Cyber filth. <laughs> also, what happened with the show match? Isn't this the first major that hasn't had a show match? It was in the Listen, I'm going to get well. free and clear of DMCA territory, and then I'll be opening my requisite can of post-major whoop-ass. Don't worry. <laughs> things, okay. things, things are going to get said.
But just for now, let's let's enjoy the the, the, the <laughs> fact that we're in <laughs> Starladder's blind spot, right? And we'll just calm fucking... before the storm, before Rich. Yeah. Goes. Oh yeah. You you know how I roll, motherfucker. Right. They've got to take this round here. They have absolutely yeah. got to a Vanguard. Must convert this. They even have a smoke. So oh, Dupree's get... du Dupree's got the pot, the pit though. So. Oh, James. Is... <laughs> yeah, Jim. <laughs> Look, I, they aren't I, really. I, I guarantee yeah, you probably will know about this. One person dies, he's out of you, but I'm guarantee you, if Quicker too, dies, he's out thinking. of you. What are you doing? Move. What? They're in for the meta smoke. No, he's not, buddy. Then he's why did they throw there so early, then? Oh, okay, Quicker got the first okay. game. It's fine, we're going. <gasps> but bust the breeze are fucking in, god. Bust in, oh. makes me feel no good. Care. Oh, no shit. Care. Then it's still one. Damn, James should have said. And he dies. Look how far away he is. How oh, is he taking 19 Ooh. damage from there? Dude. Inferno is a fucking. <laughs> turns out, mate, those explosives like a pretty, pretty big. Like, see, they just left it too long at the start. But that's what I'm talking about. I mean, like, you can criticize a Vanguard for maybe not taking a risk and pushing through a smoke when they had the numerical advantage. But it's the fact that Astralis even like we've still got the smokes to put down. Like, <laughs> you know, we're gonna waste as much of your time as possible. And uh, just close out the round. That, that utility coming into play again. Come on, the boys. Do something. Embarrassing. I'd be able to see quicker to start running about you, but at least the Sanji there. quicker start tree, but... windmilling. <laughs> Have a windmill. There's no point sitting on the corners, but if you're going to get your lips peeled back by device every time he comes around the corner. Just going to make him feel sad, but... So, Davey, is Sanji not buying down for utility or upgrading his gun just so he can get the op out for Jam whenever they buy it? I think he already used that banana. Or maybe he didn't. I'm not sure. I wasn't really paying attention. Uh, but he only bought a he only bought like a smoke. Yeah, maybe then. Okay. Ah, oh, Busta. Bust in. Or maybe he was. Or maybe uh, because he was going aggressive that he didn't want to waste money on nades that he wasn't going to use. Fair enough. As long as he gets an M4 in return. Uh, you know. Yeah, but I, I did have a feeling that this was going to be the most one-sided major final, mind. Yep. This is why I am I glad that... I had that feeling, didn't I? That's what everyone Yeah, I don't think anybody... Thank God major finals are still BO3s instead of BO5s, huh? Uh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Even with reseeding, shit like this can happen. It can. Best of fives are so good, but if you don't have two comparable teams, it's just holy fuck. Thoughts on the major overall? Again, uh, what we're gonna do because we missed a week, might maybe even two of by the numbers, and we've got to hit our like uh, Patreon goals. I think when Duncan gets back and settled, we're gonna do like a double whammy and maybe film two episodes like in the same day. Uh, and we're going to do one that's a complete breakdown of the major, and then the other is going to be a breakdown of all of the news that's going on, all of these league announcements. Um, and the other video is just going to be a complete breakdown. Finally, yeah, as yeah, yeah. This is going to be a full, full, full just complete breakdown. Just me strung out on beak for fucking six days without sleep. <laughs> Why is it all gone wrong, Sam? My heart won't stop palping. Well, uh, this week's complete breakdown. Oh, gee. What is he doing? Yeah. You won't walk through a smoke in a 3v2 retake, but you walk through a smoke where they got top banana control. You have no idea what anyone is. <laughs> Sound. Sound. <laughs> Definitely walk through then. Worst part is he, he went for a shot earlier, so they even knew the order. Yeah, oh, he's seen yeah. four of them charging him, like. Oh, he knew bad news was coming. He definitely heard them running top car. Like, no. So egregious, but. Doesn't make any sense. But again, this is what happens, man. You get in a major final, you start feeling the pressure, you see yourself at the bottom of the scoreboard, you start doing dumb shit. And that and that's the difference between a team like the Vanguard and a team like Astralis. Then you know, Astralis is just another day in the office, like Oh, they've yeah. all rotated to me. It's all god. Oh, it's over. It's over. It's it's over. <laughs> I love gamble how stack, oh, gamble stack, and if they go B, it's jam time. But it's not even a gamble stack, because no quick no, is just right. gone back, but left. like, yeah, what are we doing? Right. Yeah. But decide no, on right. something! <laughs> do <don't> something! <laughs> they have no map control. Play 2-2 two, two or play all on A, do something! Ooh. A trend! I love Sam. 
<laughs> He's not wrong though. They like have no map control besides Brack. Here we go, Dren. Here we go. Go off. All right, all right. Around on the ball, guys. Oh, Dren yeah. wants the second major back in the game. Yeah, man. This is where you have to pop off and g your team up. You know what I mean? Come on. Mate, five five CT rounds, and we're back in the game. <laughs> yeah, man. Let's let, let it's gonna be an absolute <laughs> crawl to five rounds. By the way, like it's gonna be a nightmare. Jam time, jam time. You win this, but you money fuck them for a jam round. Time. Get a free jam round. time, jam time. They need time. him to pop off though. They Come absolutely on, jam. need jam to pop off. Come on, the boys. Got nothing to lose. Bustin makes me feel bad. There we go. <laughs> makes me oh my god, so there we go! Oh, makes me feel so good. I feel like if Magus was gonna go Flashing through that smoke, each other he through smokes done it, and like, everything. Before Device died. Like, Using once Device grenades. died, going through that's not worth it anymore. Unbelievable, Jeff. Maybe he was going through the flash from steps. Did, he, uh, did, did they flash? I don't know, that's I what it looked like did. he was waiting for, Maybe? right? I, I know, right? That's hit, what it looked though. like, but I don't think they flashed. Already got <laughs> to be. Big rotations in. I like it. Give up banana control, but cleave to that. Big brain. Big brain. Big brain. <laughs> False hope. False hope. Three man be big. Drop them all. You get them on boost. Get them on boost. This rotation is pretty good. Nice buster. Here we go, on the boost, your heads are gone, surely. Oh, quick and no! <laughs> oh, you forgot the back of his head to shoot. Sick fly. Why are we getting oh, Sam to cast the fucking flash. finals, bro? Yeah, cool. Eat at the same time. Perfect. Yeah, those flies are so sick, yeah. They got a bomb plant, though, so are they gonna force? Nah. That's a hard one round eco if I've ever seen it. Jim coming into this stat wise was having a better tournament than fucking device. So him being one in five right now is rough. <laughs> he needs the fucking bang. I think I I think I've seen him miss like three easy shots that I've never seen him miss before. We can all have a mental break. It's map one. It's fine. Just calm down. Oh, deep breath. Go deep breath. Medic against Beagles? Oh, he's we go white swing. Three, two, one. Zipnik's gonna blow your brains off. Oh, oh what are you doing? 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 What is he Why doing? Why have you run down mid with a knife out? Why have you run down mid with a knife out? Why have you done it? Oh, oh no, I'm that's gonna be sick. sick. You just threw the whole fucking oh, round. Oh my god. Oh, man, he's got a nightmare, man. I'm gonna be sick. Oh, I'm gonna be sick. Nightmare. Yeah. I'm this is a nightmare sick. if you're Jay, mate. This, uh, this is Wait, like how many fucking rounds. Why are you running down mid with a I fucking rifle, you mad backwards cunt? You got an all but it's the Eagles. Yeah, just run down mid. Sound. No. Oh, that's unreal. Like He walked down yeah. mid to peek into a second mid, and then Zipnik started shooting Great him from Mexico. So he tried to pull out his knife and jump away, but he got fucked. Great ideas. But he shouldn't have made that play second the first For place, no reason right? against pistols when they're almost certainly going to be rushing up second. If not, they're going to be hiding the bottom banana. Why though? Why though? It was just, bad. It was just really bad timing. Well, you're being you know, a little harsh. Are you defending that just play? Really bad, no but yeah. you're starting, to, you're starting really? to depreciate your value, nah, but the more, man, more shit no. you talk, the less <laughs> coaching gigs and <laughs> casting gigs are getting available. Well, I'm telling you, you I'm keep telling, telling me they're watch, running it down mid, the peak watch, second mid, but it's a yeah, good idea. Go watch any you're top You're going to be on dust demos, level of gigs. They all do that. They no all way. do that. Not against reset. No way. No, 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 no. You just want to have a way. teammate. They'll make that move. That's when you want to do it, because then you can establish all mid control at the op, right? Yeah. Like if yeah. he, he was holding, like he was holding down mid for steps. a few seconds. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, why you peak them? He was if you like, think you're right, against pistols and they don't peak mid, why is the second play peaked on second mid? Where because the you only get a free other players they're gonna be running up second mid with pistols. Yeah. But if, but if you he can hear one get shot away. and gets away, yeah. yeah. The, the only right reason he died. Did you see where he died? The only reason he died is because Zip peaked bottom mid. That's the only reason he died. Which yeah, is a yeah. on which no. The only reason he died is because yeah, he peaked bottom mid on Inferno. Yeah. What round would on that ever happen? Pistol. 
Whether they on, ever got a peak T round, stairs guess, on Inferno, if, that never happened. If, if he peaked T stairs half a second earlier, or if Jame held it for half a second longer, he just kills Zip and it's a free kill. And, and we'd be saying, why, like, why'd Zip peak that? I'm telling you, it really wasn't as bad of a play as you're making it out to be, I promise. It yeah, just it looked real bad. That was like yeah. the only thing yeah, yeah. that you could really criticize. Eddie, it's just, just, it just Eddie looked Eddie really bad. Like, go watch Eddie a pro op demo, man. They all do it. I'm telling you, it really wasn't... A, like, yeah, when you have the weapon advantage, you want to just give map control against the best players in the world. You give them space with deagles, you just end up getting fucking one deep anyway. So you don't want to just give them the entire map in 10 seconds when you have an advantage like that. You have to press your advantage, but he just did it in a really poor like fashion. Yeah, he, he got he, timing he, in bottom mid, and he didn't have a teammate helping him. That was the problem. His play was like completely fine. It was which, just not. In that who, who, who was the teammate? Yeah. It was closest to him. Nobody, there, like no literally, it was, yeah. no, yeah. it was It was literally yeah. nobody's with the him. invisible yeah. fucking man. All right, All good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All in the play. <laughs> but doesn't doesn't that show desperation on James' part? Uh, like, oh no, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Hundred percent. If you're against the best the players play. with eagles, you're probably gonna get killed. So he's might. No, I didn't say. I didn't say it was the correct play. Sam. I said it wasn't as bad as you're making it out to be. Oh, that's just a, got that's fucking destroyed by the device through the smoke. <laughs> whatever that's now. That's just a fucking <laughs> whatever the now. F's in the chat. Oh, whatever <laughs> now. Oh man, yeah, Nvidia, James. Nvidia. That... Nvidia. <laughs> I just um, I just uh, retweeted a tweet from Sean Gares where he's like, Astralis haven't let Jim get in the game yet, so I don't think he'll recover from this start. I'm like, I don't think so. This could be horrific for him. This could be like you know, four kills across two maps territory if he doesn't get his shit together. This is fucking horrendous, dude. He's getting banged out through smokes and everything now. Yeah, this could be a big like, hey, welcome to the finals. Yeah, moment. this is what it's like. It's like, oh, it's like, yeah, yeah. So like, oh, have you had fun just trying group stages for your whole career? Well, welcome, welcome to the finals now. <laughs> welcome to the finals. It's like so far you've beat uh, who'd they beat? A dead ends team or did they beat Vitality? I don't remember. Oh no, they, they, they beat Vitality. Vitality right? and then no. beat yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like you. So so far, so you beat Renegades in the semifinals, and now here you are. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> this looks like me yeah that's a good point first actually line, the the 9 uh 44 score from fifth lauren which by the way uh people always say that's like the worst pro performance uh, but it, but that isn't true there's been a, there's been a few that are worse than that but uh be interesting to see where in a, in a final gym. or was that that wasn't in the final. Yeah, that wasn't, wasn't even in the final, I don't think. I think that was in the game against... Was it Virtus Pro? I can't remember. That was 2014. Like, my brain don't go f that far back. Yeah. But, um... I thought I thought it was in the final that they won, right? Well, it was the final, was or it? Or was it the final okay. they lost? All right, all right. Plus, I mean, to be fair for Flaren, he's never... He was never a player that would have as much impact as, like, Jane with the AWP, you know? So this is even more yeah. surprising yeah. because Jane is normally the of this As much as I hate that term. Oh, so there you go. Yeah, it, it was the 2014 Katowice final on Inferno. Okay, so VP won then. So yeah, so, so, so yeah, that so that probably is the worst performance in a final, um, in a major final. So maybe Jim can be a record breaker, guys. <laughs> maybe he can <laughs> break. Maybe he can break all the records today. One in doubt, double op it out. All right. Yeah, uh, uh, he might have less nice. kills, but he might have less kills, but he definitely won't have less deaths. So yeah, we'll well we'll see. That's Sorry, true. I mean, I guess with him being a save. Yeah. yeah, with with yeah, with with him being a saver specialist. Why are they dropping Sanji MP9s, man? Like what? Uh, you know, at this point, this this is almost like a whatever, guys. This is I like bet, where if I you bet need... he's gonna go play halls with it. Yeah, if, this is where like you be the IGL right now. You just sort of like like listen, guys. Like one round at a time now, guys. There's another map coming. Don't worry. This is their pick. You see anything yeah, you can try and get. Probably this time. There you go. Yeah, there you go, yeah. That's there it. Go, so he takes one with you. <laughs> oh no. Nice. Reload home slice. <laughs> uh, yeah, Sanji, Sanji push, pushed halls. Mm. With the MP9. And arguably an MP9 is better in halls than an M4. Oh, oh I bust it. Ah, uh, yeah. Build out. Whoa, that Molly could have been fucking scary if you hit them both, then. Huh? But he's gonna slow right. them both in it. It's around guys. the life, but I mean, oh man, Zipex is left. <laughs> then <surely laughs> not, minute on the though, clock too. Not, Imagine, don't, not. don't, don't throw smoke. Don't, don't.
Yeah, even he can't win this one. Yeah. It says a lot about a team when everyone, when they get one round, we're like, damn, they're looking all right. They got one round. <laughs> yeah, they go one round. They go one <laughs> round. <laughs> they're, they're holding on. Oh, the five CT sounds could be possible. <laughs> sounds? He just gets dull. Yeah, just have a little love tap, a little love dome. Love some love dome. Yeah. <laughs> Dink. Well, the 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 two rounds from potentially being in uh, touching distance, but again, I just can't see it, man. Two like rounds Charles. of pistol and a beautiful tea set away from the dream. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I mean. It's like how much, like how much Gold does it have to be? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, uh, it's a super important oh, pistol round coming oh. up, Billy. Oh. And there it is, like fucking full easy oh in. God, kick hurt though. Hello. They got so much control, didn't they? Oh, no, they didn't. They're all bottom bananas. Yeah. They've gone back to the bottom. Yeah. All right. Doubled up arch. All right. Not bad. <laughs> Sam, we see us going to get you to cast the final. I know this is what we need. No, but like he's not even, he's doing a new casting style. It's where he just says his thoughts yeah, about just what him. <laughs> yeah, he just says his thoughts words. about what they're doing. Get into him. Uh, out loud. Fucking hell, what you doing? Style it's, I'm not gonna lie. it's the Ben Law style of commentary. Like it's a it's a new thing. Like, it's a new Law. thing. <laughs> yeah, Ben Law. Delay the plant. Molly. Oh, magic is plant the default on me. Oh. Are you telling me? Yeah. Come no. down. Here we go. Ah, oh, they don't know though. And as soon as he gets on the boost, we're just gonna dome him. There, oh. goes. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. there the most goes. predictable boost in the whole game. Yeah, like, let's just like do it. that. Like, there's a smoke there. Why don't we do the double boost? <laughs> they just dome. Adrena, especially. Flash. They just saw two or three nids come from that very position as well. Like, they knew yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, James. Dome. <laughs> dome. Oh, bring back saving Jane, but bring back private saving Jane. Oh. Ooh, oh. Dome. Oh, Look at the stats. <laughs> Everyone else oh, in the bank, guys, on 10 or plus kills. He's on one. Fred Man, Slick. This Mate. is the worst. Like, Quick, it's minus one. Outside of that, he's the only one who's negative, but this could actually be a decent game if James won't get his lips blown off everywhere. But... <laughs> he's on nice near the R. The, this this is what people have nightmares about. Like I said, this is like legit. Like he, you know, ridiculous. Oh no, I've I've Body seen this too. happen before firsthand. This this looks like my map versus Kenny S. The first time I played it. <laughs> 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 what map did you play on? Was shit. it Inferno as well? No, it was Mirage, and it was right oh, before even the worse. nerf. <laughs> yeah, even worse. Nice. All right. Counts as a trade, even if it was 10 seconds after on the other side of the map. That's a trade. Play how play it so far no off. one's seen it. No one's seen this. Uh, play the Jaws nah, music, Sam. Aware, they should know, surely. <laughs> they should. They should know someone. Nah, they it. don't. Yeah, two's <laughs> looking. Who is that? Dren's running at him now. Knife out. Here we go. He didn't know. Oh, he lost. <laughs> 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 What do you mean? 12 3 half's fine? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> what do you mean? 12 3 half with one of your players literally just like having not <laughs> turned on their monitor. There, no problems, guys. Too. Like, no problem. <laughs> no problems. Oh, right? I had to bring mouse today. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> He's done Stavros from the 80s, <laughs> like he's, he's he's gone full Harry Enfield. I've just gone general Oh, hello everybody, mate. I don't even know what the accent actually is. Yeah, I don't know. It's gone for vague, neutral accent. Somewhere vague that isn't British. <laughs> <laughs> what accent is vague, neutral? <laughs> Not mine. That's, it, that's his alignment in Dungeons & Dragons. What alignment are you, Sam? <laughs> vague, neutral. <laughs> I have zero principles. They just fluctuate from, from time to time. Yeah, this is tough, dude. This is a real fucking tough start, man. I mean, it it's classic Astralis as well. They're so good at neutralizing players. I remember they used to do this a lot against Simple as well. Obviously not this brutal, but they just have him have like such an off game when they play it against him. Yeah. That, well, the other thing is like Inferno is just compounding that. Inferno is not the easiest 
map to just like get opping on. You can have incredible op games on Inferno, but it's sure, not yeah. easy. I mean, it's gonna get hard, and now like he's on the T side, right? The next map yeah. does too, though. James back in the game. James dropping thirty. Back in the game. As this, I've just got a race to the moon show ad on a on Starladder's channel. <laughs> James just got up and left the stage on mainstream today. <laughs> Easy Sorry. to go out for a breath. I need to get some Retired. Air. Wait, dude, really? Some air. This someone, isn't happening. This isn't said. happening. Well, a few people in the chat. This isn't happening. I'm still well, dreaming. Good. Yeah, you should. Go have a, go have a nice deep breath. Retired. Mid game. Three deep oh, breaths, as I've said, yeah. will get you through any stinky, si yeah, any stinky situation. <laughs> Whatever it takes for Jim to win. Avangar has made an announcement. They're replacing Jim with the coach. <laughs> Get him out. <laughs> <laughs> Mid-game replacement. Get him out. They uh, informed everybody via Twitlonger. Perfect. Let's go. We've decided to play with the bot so we can control it. I apparently just got up for a little walk. Everyone in the chat saying he's still there. Right in. Just having a stretch. It's having a walk about <laughs> thinking about it, but getting right with the Yeah, that's what it was. Like, that's Save what it was. He press. just needed to warm up, boys. He just needed to warm up. Same way I do before I do a forward roll. I'm like, yeah, guys, I'll get it this time. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, no, I can do a backflip, guys. I just need to have a stretch. Oh, like. friend lived. What the fuck? The first what? nade didn't go all the way in the logs, did it? No, I didn't see it, actually. I did. It's just not that special. CSGO job, grenades, man. ladies and gentlemen. You never know what you're going to get. Oh, your red's gone. I was just going to get tapped out of the universe there, but... Everyone in the chat saying he jumped over it. You do know how shrapnel works, right, guys? <laughs> like, just because, yeah, he jumped so he didn't die. That's that's good. That's not how the game is supposed to operate. It's supposed to be rage. Oh, oh did they throw that? decoys to bait yeah, the smoke? They did, they yeah, but fucking jokes on them. Astralis that's bought funny. two smokes this round. And there's three yeah, there. fucking jokes on them. <laughs> they, thought, they thought they were being sneaky. Like, oh, we'll bait their smoke by throwing our decoys. Second smoke. And there's three, three there. Yeah, second. Oh, the smoke. smoke's bad though. There's a gap on it. Molly's they're, coming. They they're going. They're going. Here. Keep spamming, Jim. Yeah. Oh. Oh, oh. Oh my Go on, Jim. On boost. Go on, Jim. Another confidence frag. Oh, Jim Back got a second game. kill. Perfect. Jim ever Back in the game. a triple kill and a pistol. Now I think, think Charles can still Adren? win because oh. of the HP. Oh, oh, I don't know about oh he's oh. had a nightmare. He's had a nightmare. Ooh. He didn't have to shoot he's the first one. Oh, oh, well, oh Jim, Jim, back of the Bang. game. Yup. No oh, kids. Two frags. Stance. But Get the fourth, three. Jim. Go on. Three. Don't peek. Don't peek. Wait from the top, eh? No kid. There we go. Peace, peace, peace. Come on, Jim. Sick him, Jim. <laughs> Sick him. <laughs> 3k, but I called him. him. Told you. Triple in a pistol. He's back. Back in the game, great analysis. Back in the gym, boys. Back in the gym. <laughs> Come on, Jim. Maybe just stop using art, but maybe just not using art, but well, right now. Maybe just only use a Glock. Get him on a rifle. You know what I've done, Davey? In your honor, uh, I've ordered some poutine. Oh, fuck. oh no! Wait, yeah. no, no! Don't do that. USB no, no, no. Cancel it! Cancel it! <laughs> cancel oh, it's it. coming in. It's coming in. All right, where you order? I'll order it from there too. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it says it says they're Canadians. They should know the yeah. thing. So I've done it for you, Davey. If it's bad, they're not okay. one of us, though. Yeah, I, I I never trust American poutine. It's always iffy. I've had it like three times in the U.S. and just never again. It's all about the real cheese curds. That's the difference right there. Oh, them rubber cheese curds the Yanks use. <laughs> yeah, made by Kraft. <laughs> Fuck. Slice yeah. version. <laughs> Kraft plastic cheese curd. Now with less microplastics and cancer-causing agents. Enjoy. But we made up for it with more sugar.
Jim, back in the gym, back in the gym. Oh, oh. Nice. He's fine. Oh, Imagine no. if you had the biggest first half to second half discrepancy. Imagine if he just popped off now after that stretch. Like Drops like 20 somehow. Huge. Those pistol runs definitely do help your confidence. Oh, nice. He said, Father, just about help me. Another confidence kill for Jim. That's what's up. Here we go. Here we go. Feed him this one as well. Go on, go save B. I think coming into this, Jim we had a 1.27 fucking rating for the whole tournament. So like, Yeah, he was popping yeah, off, they, dude. They, they fucking need him. He cannot go quiet in the final. Was it Jim that made that really unreasonable Twitter joke where he said he'd been attacked by yeah. religious people or some shit? Yeah, it was. It was it, he, yeah. No, what, what what he did was, this is where what everyone gets wrong, right? What he actually did was somebody was spamming that copy pasta. It was like a CIS copy pasta. He posted the copy pasta and said, like, you shouldn't do this. And you shouldn't make fun of people's religion. And you and, and basically everybody jumped on it and said he wrote the copy pasta and as if he was saying it as a statement of fact. And he wasn't. And it was just like one of those dumb fucking things where nobody looked into it uh before like sort of like getting on the outrage mobile. So so James took a lot of shit uh, for something that he didn't do, he didn't start. And then when they came out and apologized, even though they had nothing to apologize for, people said the apology wasn't good enough. So dude, that that was absolutely stupid. It was one of the stupidest things I've ever seen in in, in outrage CS. Like, uh, but yeah, he uh, he the, the, the copy pasta was something like I have been attacked by Christians or something. So he addressed it, saying like, "Listen, guys, we're better than this. We we shouldn't be attacking people based on religion." People thought he meant he had actually been attacked and was saying people shouldn't attack me because of my religion as a Christian. But he didn't say that at all. He said the copy pasta was stupid and we shouldn't be posting it in chat. Yeah. That's what he was saying. And he got Good wrecked. Good guy, James. Good guy, James. Yeah. He got absolutely wrecked for it. Which is just classic. I mean, that just tells you everything you need to know about the internet right there. You know what I mean? Because I nearly did it. I nearly knee jerked and was like, wait, you've been attacked by Christians and now you're saying it's a joke? And then I actually looked into oh, it and I was like, I was yeah. I was like, hang on a minute, Richard. You're meant, you're meant to not do this. You always complain about knee jerk outrage mobs. So why, why are you getting involved in one? <laughs> so I looked at it and I was like, all right, okay. Oh, that boost is vicious, man. Yeah, if he had an M4, uh, that was probably a double kill. Yeah, that's fucking... He had the pre-drop. <laughs> nice. Ooh. None of them even played anti-flash, and I think I think I was just a straight blind doorman. I was lucky. Yeah, since he came through with it, so they all stared at it afterwards. Exactly. Yep. All right, oh, then. It's almost back to even. Yeah. And now we get now we get back to real Counter Strike for this round. Let's see. How they this better one goes. upgrade the majority of those. Yeah. I'm trying to get a drop an op for Jane, maybe take the AK. Fuck the second mm. Mac 10. It's nah. a big first rifle round. I don't know. Fuck that. No, keep the Mac 10s. They're pretty Device loaded. Got, so Device has got a really good spawn for mid. I'm curious if he's gonna peek it. Looks like he might. Especially on a map like this Seaside, keeping Mac 10s is really, really viable. Not only because of the close quarters, but because of how much utility is needed on CT side. Mm -hmm. The amount of people that typically skip head armor in this scenario is actually pretty high. Like, it's not the scenario right now. Astralis only has one person skipping yeah, it, but it happens Charles a lot. They're all going to have Mac 10, so they all bought yeah. it. But even yeah. still, even just that threat making them waste money on head armor, like now they don't have a kit. So, yeah. I would say it's almost always worth it to do, if you have a buy like that to keep it. Ah. 
God damn it. Somebody in the chat. Drex, that fucking meme. I, that better be the meme from Nuke. Oh, Somebody yeah, said, oh, I think it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where Astralis isn't known for their T-side on Nuke. I had a stroke when I read that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was unbelievable, wasn't it? <laughs> that was unbelievable, wasn't it? I mean, the team oh, that went by sides are pretty bad. Team, like, what the dude. fuck <laughs> are you on? Put down the bath salts and have a glass of milk, you <laughs> oh, mad backwards <laughs> cunt. Round gone. Yeah. Yeah, this is Literally more like, you know. Major gone. Utility to get into the site there. Find like, why? Jim gone. Didn't throw Jim any gun. flashes. Didn't throw any mollies. Why? Just a test that was just a feel of some rookie shit. Like, yeah, we're just, we, we're just gonna walk in. Yeah, it seemed like they were on autopilot that run, and I don't really know why. But if you're gonna keep Mac 10s, like, like I said, I think it's actually almost always worth it, but you still have to have a plan in mind to get them in some way. Can't just be smoke CT and walk into B. That can't be your plan. With fucking Mac 10s. With Mac 10s. Yeah, we're gonna, yeah, gonna walk sense. into somewhere. Kill me. Oh, I'm walking down this really narrow corridor that's long range. Hmm, it's an M4, I'm dead. Okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, how you doing, Josh, man? Thanks for joining us, buddy. Yeah, did I miss it? Uh, like you've almost missed almost the entire almost final, yeah. yeah. You've almost <laughs> missed the entire final. Uh, so yeah, everyone, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Steel joining us for the final. Uh, we got Steel in, another proud member of the No Majors Club. How you been? How's that um, degenerate schedule of yours been working out for you? You know, just getting up real late in the day. Mm -hmm. Just, uh, it's not healthy. It really isn't. It's gonna end no. soon. I've been doing. I mean, I've been doing it the other way around. I've been waking up at stupid o'clock. I can't wait for this major to be over, so I can actually have a lie in uh, for a change. But um, I've had, I've been like the other day getting up at six a.m. to watch fucking Renegades of Vanguard. Like, imagine doing that with your life. Like, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not what I had planned to when when uh, by the time I was this age. So whatever. What about, uh, what, a cappuccino what about at eight p.m. so you can play FPLs? <laughs> well, I was gonna ask, what about uh, the grind and, and the and the team situation and stuff? You got anything going on? Um, things are in the works, but nothing's set yet. There's a lot okay. of uh, a lot of things that have to be discussed, worked out, and obviously, being man for majors is a big roadblock yeah. for that. Well, I think the way things are headed, dude, uh, honestly, I, I kind of think that's going to matter less and less, especially with all these leagues being announced, right? I mean, because you're going to be free to play in those. And um, yeah. yeah, I think that's, uh, as I said, I, I think the majors are kind of like, they're slowly kind of ebbing out of like, uh, you know, the scene as a priority, which I think is a shame. But if Valve aren't going to address the issues that we've clearly got, then fuck it, that's on them. If people yeah. are going to put, if, if other tournament organizers are going to run bigger tournaments and bigger circuits that make the major look small, you either have to nut up and make the majors great again, or you fucking don't, uh, and deal with the consequences. So I think I think you'd be well positioned actually at the end of 2019, 2020. Um, yeah, I think in the in the short term though, until like those leagues actually start and we know exactly what's happening, especially with like who's running them, am I even mm. eligible to play in those or or not? I think once we find that out and when they actually start running or whatever and when orgs know more, that's when it could be like, oh, well, it doesn't actually, majors don't matter that much anymore. Here's why versus, oh, mo majors aren't going to matter much sometime down the road. And here's some speculation as to why. Yeah. We're just giving it spamming bodies. As as per usual, he's he's redding up, guys. But yeah, this 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 is done. This is over. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, there's a few people in the chat. I, you know, I don't know how I feel about it, but certainly the major's been underwhelming, and it's some of it Star Ladder's fault, but. Honestly, some of it kind of isn't. Like, what can you do that the player break happens before the major and all that great Counter-Strike we were seeing literally one month prior basically evaporates? You know, you can't you can't do anything about that. And it's certainly been a better major than London. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Uh, you know, 
Krakow wasn't day. all that great, guys. Yeah, Krakow wasn't all that great. People, people have got short memories. Like whatever's put in front of them, they'll assess that, and then they'll be hyperbolic about what they're seeing in here and now. I thought Krakow was a pretty weak major, all things told. Had a lot of problems that were like, you know, everyone was critical of for London. Krakow seemed to get a pass because if you remember, PGL were very well liked by the community at that time and were really pushing production value to kind of the next level, doing things in games, you know, that we hadn't seen before. Oh, device, you've got to be angry about that, son. Right. Um, but uh, but Krakow ended up producing a weak major with, with um, again, weird teams in the final and not a lot of great storylines. They had a lot of tech problems. So calling this the worst major ever is absolute nonsense. Krakow was before we started doing the reseeding too, right? Yeah. That was, it wasn't that like the last one on that. That's like what caused everybody, like why the switch happened. If mm -hmm. I remember correctly, I could be remembering it wrong. I can't remember which tournament it was, but I just remember like there was one major where it was like, all right, fuck this. After this, always just having the correct seating and all that every single time. Is the Vanguard choking? I don't get it. Like they've had the yeah. advantage in the last like three rounds I watched. Hmm. They seem really indecisive. I know. I did call a 16-6 game. I did. I mean, you know, early days yet, but I think that's just whereabouts we are in terms of the disparity between these teams. Straight profit. Um, yeah. Should have put a bet on that. I bet the odds are outrageous. Rivalry.com forward slash RLS is the place you could bet. You know me, mate. I don't, I, I don't gamble. It would be unethical of me to do so, so I don't. To be fair, the majors did come a long way from... 16 teams, uh, four groups of four, GSL style, BO1s the whole way through. Yeah, absolutely. Lose two BO1s, that's it, you're done. Like, yeah, the, the, the form, like, there's no problem with the format. Again, you have to understand, this is what I mean when I say it's not Starlighter's fault. I think the format they did should have produced the, you know, some really interesting games and some high quality games. And the quarterfinals were decent, I thought. Um, and we'd had some very good games before that for the deciding matches at 2-2. Two, two. There was some very good series there. But the problem that you've just got is, like, the teams that should have won didn't. <laughs> and they put themselves in situations that created one half of the bracket being stacked. And there's nothing you can do to legislate for that. There's nothing you can do. And yeah, I, I've said it many times. I wish we had a TI style format with like a pro circuit with ranking points and and a huge tournament at the end and a couple of majors along the way. But Valve have said they're not going to copy Dota in CS. So we don't get that. That's what these exclusivity leagues are kind of going to do a little bit. They're trying to bring a more cohesive vision together. I, I keep meaning ESL want to sit down and explain to me some of the plans they've got so I can talk about it on By the Numbers, but I just haven't had time with an O-Majors club, and I'm going to do that on my day off before I fly out to fucking the middle of nowhere uh, for, for a couple of weeks. But there we have it, the first map. You missed nothing, by the way, Josh. Honestly, it was, it was, it was very poor. Yeah, I blinked and it was gone. It was done. Yeah. It'd be good to know a little bit more about the ESL plans, I guess. Mm -hmm. Because obviously they, uh, they're one of the companies that I can play basically anything as long as it's not a major, right? Yep. And I, I get events too. Yeah, and I and I that, that's what they're doing here. It's like so. It's actually interesting because it's just a repackaging of what they have, but they're making it like more cohesive. So it's like a recognized circuit. And it's pissed off a lot of the other tos because um, ESL already dominate the calendar. Like eighty percent of events are controlled by MTG. And I think a lot of people were hoping that MTG were maybe going to get antsy and sell off some of the properties. There was a little bit of talk that maybe they were going to let DreamHack go um, because their share price had, had, had plummeted. Uh, but uh, that doesn't look to be the case. Uh, they've got a lot of financial backing from some big sponsors, you know, Intel uh, being, you know, principal among them. And now they, with, they, they're going to basically, because DreamHack's been a bit of a failing product, Looks like by folding DreamHack into this kind of circuit, they're going to get a little bit of the budget that ESL was kind of getting and ESEA were getting. And now you've got, you sort of have a, a, a global tour with all these different events that'll have different talent and a different flavor, but more of a cohesive storyline through it. And of course, five million 
um, dollars of prize money to be won, which, by the way, that's not even a big... That sounds like a big deal on paper, but they were already giving away about $4.8 million doing the same thing. It, so, it's again, it's, I, it's what I mean. It's, it's a rebranding. I read a tweet that they were, like, that didn't even include, like, MDL and all the other stuff that USA was giving away, so it's still, like, pretty yeah. much the same number. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, the I am Grand Slam is still a part of that, so it can yep. still be potentially higher than the five. And me and Scoots were talking about this yesterday, Josh, where it's like, I think Intel are definitely going to want the Grand Slam to be more difficult to win, because I'm pretty <laughs> sure they <laughs> didn't yeah. plan on giving out two million fucking dollars in, like, as many years when they announced that it was meant to be you know pretty hard to achieve and then obviously team liquid did it in like fucking 70 days or whatever it was you know so i think that'll be a big part of it it'll be harder to win but they might even up the prize pool you know for that they might increase it from a mil like one and a half or two but make it even even fucking more difficult to win because you know obviously sponsors they don't want to have to give away the max spend (laughs) Uh, just in case anyone is under any illusions otherwise But yeah, I'll, I'll um I'll tell you what I'll do, Josh. Um, because I am like I say I'm due to speak to them. And, like once this event's over, I'll uh, I'll I'll t- I'll tell them to hit you up, or I'll just ask the question directly, saying I was talking to you, and you know, Josh would like to know a little bit more about it because he's got to make some roster moves based on what you're doing. So, yeah, that'd be good. That would uh, yeah. probably help a lot with the all the negotiations and everything. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Mm. By the way, Sam, when are you when are you um, playing the tribute to Dust? By the way, that I'm waiting for you, but I'm waiting for you to go. I was going to leave. All right. We well, okay. Now. Well, we while got, we while we're, we're between days. maps, yeah. While we're between maps, uh, one of the things you wanted to do is um, obviously I don't know if people know this, but in in Louisiana, uh, where Dust is from, uh, they do this thing where you can go hunting rats, uh, and these giant rats called Nutria. And uh, if you, you, they'll give you money for the tails of these giant rats, right? So this sort of prompted a meme that basically Dust was sort of the, a, a bounty hunter, but of but of rats. And obviously, we know that there's a dog, the bounty hunter, right? You all remember the TV series. Sam's a huge fan of that. So what Sam decided to do was actually record him singing the dog, the bounty hunter theme, but with a little bit of a twist. Um, so I think Sam's box is gone. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> you guys can judge for yourself. Uh, but yeah, well, we, we, we now bring you the, the, the debut of, uh, Dust the Bounty Hunter. I'll let you play it, Sam. I'm feeling rodents all around me. I'm eating fish heads in the sun. I'm four foot nine, a legal dwarf. Yo, Liz Noob's career is gone. I'm the dust, the four foot dust, the rodent hunter. You're mentally awake. <laughs> you want to say that? Like, I don't know what you were thinking there, man. But the best part is, as well, just thinking about your family, like listening oh, to you man, doing this. So like, I am them. a dwarf, a legal dwarf. <laughs> like, just like, up in your room. Windows open as well. Oh, Neighbors, like, why is he singing about dwarves again? Uh, man, that's just so ridiculous. How many takes did it? Did you have? To I do? think I was the third recording, but because I changed one lyric, <laughs> so I, I recorded it three times. One quietly, uh, once with one lyric. So and then twice well i'm 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 loving it sam uh we'll definitely consider that for all the people asking about the no majors club meme review we're probably going to do that in the next few days uh we'll definitely take a break after today uh, it's not going to happen straight after this stream but then we're going to reconvene the great order of the no majors club all the regulars dust vince you know flom you can come along if you want to do the meme review there's a doorbell that's breakfast nice. nothing else matters now guys hey. Sorry. <laughs> got my poutine <laughs> Vegas poutine for breakfast? <laughs> That's what I said. Yeah, he's assured That's... everyone that the owners are Canadian, but... Oh, uh, well. Yeah. <laughs> you never trust American poutine. You never do. I'm not even a fan of poutine to begin with, anyways. It's just like, fries on their own are just so much better, anyways. Just salt them up and you're good. But maybe I'm just weird. A little vinegar and ketchup, or not even? 
Nah. I used to have a little bit of vinegar, but honestly, just salt those bitches up and then you're good to go. Am I allowed to say bitch in this thing? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kind of always have to just ask and just reassure myself these days. No rules, yeah. We talk about Vinci and human shit on this. <laughs> I don't think there's any rules. Yeah. Right, this is why I brought you on, Josh, because I've ordered. I'm, I'm going to feed my disgusting fat face. Let's and do you're going to carry the broadcast for me. So I'm going to carry the broadcast. Cause yeah, you're carrying the broadcast while I like. a great host of broadcasts. No, you're known for it, dude. You're known for it. So uh, I, I think if the, the chat throw some questions Steele's way. I'm sure he's got lots All to right. talk about. If you want to fire me up, just say something really fucking dumb and triggering in chat, because that's the only way to get anything out of me that's going <laughs> to well, come with any bit of emotion. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to be eating. That's what I love most. So I'm going to mute my mic. Take it away, Josh. Don't Josh. spam it all caps. I'm not going to read that shit. You match fixing scumbag steel. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> right, ban that guy. Ah, uh, it's scrolling too fast. What should have James done to counter device? Wait, did was it even like James versus device? I no. feel like it's very rarely off versus op. It's usually just like an opera will find an entry opening pick onto a rifle. Unless you really know where the opera is going to be and you flash them off and hold for them to repeak, it's very rarely like off versus op like that. Just straight up dual. Usually there's some sort of like flashes or swinging or something involved with that, and the ops are just trying to get easy kills on. Vertigo looks like a fucking shit show. That map's gotta go. If Valve's gonna keep me banned, they gotta at least fucking take that map out. They can't have it both ways. Why don't you like it? Yeah, I was gonna say, don't you think it can be reworked into something good? I haven't minded it so much the last couple of times I watched it. It looks... Okay, so one of the issues I have is, like, let's say you're a terrorist and you have the... Like, you're in one area, but you need to, like, kind of, like, fall back and go to the other side of the... And you're the CT and you hear it all. It's like, you know what's going to happen, but you can't beat the T's there. Like, you can't run and beat them to the other bomb site because you have to make noise and they're going to know exactly where you are. So there's no like r weird rotations like that can't happen. Whereas if it's like another map like Overpass or Mirage, like I can easily go somewhere else and cut them off. Like if if you're A on Mirage with a bomb, you showed yourself and then I think you're going to go bucket to B, I can easily just get back out mid and go underpass and cut you off and get some like flank going on. And you can't hear me do that because you'll be far enough away. But in Vertigo, like I was playing it one day and I, I was a CT and I heard the T's rotating from A all the way downstairs towards B and I'm like walking the whole way and I hear them the whole way, which means that if I start running, they hear me. And it's just like, okay, this is fucking dumb because I can't, I can't make a noise and they're still going to beat me there. Like there's no cutting them off. There's no like getting into a sick position. It just doesn't exist. And beyond that, it's just a smoke fucking spam fest. You just smoke shit off, and you just start spamming through it. You get the bomb plant, and then you do more smokes and try to defuse with the smokes up, and you're just shooting through smokes and mollies and above it, and it's just really not fun. It's just like a glorified aim map with smokes, I feel. Maybe the map's too new. Maybe the map's too new and people haven't really discovered the meta or anything like that, but if you're looking for a map with verticality, Nuke is a million times better. Nuke's like an actual really good map too, and I guess people are just afraid to play it because it, it's too hard for them with no proper strats or something, but if you actually are on a team and you talk about Nuke and you understand the theory behind it and the rotations and everything and how you're supposed to fight it together, and you have like ideas on T-side so you're not just getting just fucked coming out of a 2x2 two two doorway, out hut or out squeaky, then the map's actually really fun to play. No counter argument. Sick. Concur, Let's go. Yeah. Well, it's like you're rotating site to site, as you said on Vertigo. There is. Well, like, this is where I'm expecting yeah. Flom or Davy to come waiting in, right? I think Davy likes Vertigo. Uh, I'm, well, I'm not a huge fan of like the map itself, like the way it plays. I think it's awkward, but I am a fan of new things and new metas. Like, I'm okay with the map being completely different than any of the other maps we have in the pool. They still need to fix a bunch of things on the map. Like, it still needs to be reworked probably once or twice before it becomes like a good map. 
but I don't want, but I do like the fact that Valve is throwing in maps into the pool that are completely different to any of the other maps we have. Like, I like that, the, the idea behind it. That's, that's what I'm a fan of more than anything. Yep. I think, like, Overpass was a good, like, kind of newish idea. Actually, I guess it's not that, that far off of the layouts. You're speaking mainly about, like, a layout per point of view of, like, there's a direct entry to A, there's a direct entry to B, there's, like, a secondary entry to A, and then there's, like, uh, a middle area, right? Yeah, well, even like you were and saying about how, how everybody can hear everything going on, yeah. like, I don't even necessarily hate that part of it. Like, that just adds a different dynamic to the map. Like, well, like you said, where you can't just run and go cut somebody off. Like, you can't do that on Vertigo. So it adds, like, a whole new meta and a whole new play style to the game that you can't, that that isn't on any of the other maps. Like, I don't hate that. I'm not against that. I do think they still need to rework some things on the map itself, but not, like, but I don't hate that part of it. Are there any maps you think could be <clears throat> introduced in its place, like out of all the ones that they're testing out? Tuscan? Well, obviously, we yeah, all want that. I don't even know when that's ever, I don't even know if that's ever going to happen, but I meant some of the others. Like, everyone always t talks to me about fucking Sub Zero. I like, not feeling that. Me and Flom maybe thought about Canals, but I don't know. I, 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 I think Canals was, Canals. I think Canals was better than Vertigo. Like, at the time when they introduced Vertigo, I thought Canals was better, but. Yeah, it it's like one of those maps where <clears throat> it was like getting a lot better with like the updates, but it still felt really just odd at times. Like just weird rotations were happening, very similar to Vertigo, I think. Yeah, my bad. I was in the kitchen. I was listening to you guys, but I wasn't at my PC. Try good time to get some food, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So I don't know. Like when I look at the maps, I pretty. I mean, you guys are both right. Like uh, Vertigo is poo sack right now. There's no fucking getting around it, but. Yeah, Valve has to keep trying to add new things so we don't just get basically revamped versions of different maps that just are kind of like recycled, like recycled ideas. Sadly, I don't think we'll ever get Tuscan. I'm kind of interested to see how the new Cobblestone would play out if they brought back Cobblestone. I think that'd be like if they brought in new cash and they took out Mirage and maybe took out Vertigo and we tried Cobblestone. I think that'd actually be I was, really I was just going to ask, what the fuck's going on with cash? Does anybody know? I think he's Show match at ESL right? New York, right? That's, yeah. Uh, oh, I thought it was being revealed here. I'm like, wait, what the fuck's happening? No, no, no. Show match at ESL New York. If I'm uh, next no, yeah, you're right. Again. You are right. Yeah, they canceled the fucking show match for this. Do we know why? Without yet? Yeah. sources. Uh, who knows, mate? I don't know. I think the new cobble needs some work though, pretty badly. Maybe it's it's so hard to get a feel for maps like that without playing like a like just hopping into a game. Oh, he's good. They lost him into a game. Yeah, this one does that. He'll be back. To the person that asked why like all the top level pros stopped playing like FPL when like all of them used to play at rank S back in the day, it's because there's a lot of like players in FPL that are just like just look at their stream only or they don't know like smokes and flashes they can only play certain spots on certain maps and they just like really make the experience not enjoyable and if people think that when they watch my stream and they see me get like really fucking tilted while playing fpl guess what they're tilting as well they just don't uh, they either don't stream or they don't show it as much when they're streaming or they just start fucking start trolling as well just to kind of like make sure that they don't get angry they can't get angry if they're just going to be like uh oh, well i have no expectations of this so i'm just going to troll and play it for what it is currently and then because no one is doing their own part to just like hey if everyone does their part to try hard calm and like know how to do smokes and flashes and literally all the competitive maps then the quality of the games are going to be so much higher. But because people are like, well, I know that the game's not going to be good because of this or that, then it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that the games end up being shit because of those reasons. Um, recently, there's been a lot of like really good lobbies, but there's still like several people that queue up quite regularly that are just... They don't know stuff on, on maps. And it's like, how do you compete but not know this? 
like this is one of the stuff that you learn when you're in like an open team. How do you not know this if you're MDL or or above? A lot of them don't even fucking play in teams either, though. They just fucking yeah, grind up right through now. the FPS uh, through the FPLC shit, get into FPL, and like, why would they waste their time playing on a team when they could play FPL every week, get win money every week, and if they do well enough, maybe they'll just get thrown onto a pro team to go shit yep. the bed. Like, it's it's just a, it's just a disaster. No, 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 no. <laughs> Pussy. Yeah. You know I ain't like that. You can name names, Josh. If I had I'm power interested. to change anything I want in FPL, what it would be? I would fucking implement a report system that actually meant shit. Like, if there was a report system where you could actually say, like, dude, we played this game and this person didn't know how to do these like a smoke in this position and this is one of the core smokes of the the, the game i think i think they should implement some quiz system dead ass they should implement a quiz you have to know these smokes in order to play this in, in fpl if you don't know how to do a spawn smoke on inferno if you don't know how to do an xbox smoke on dust 2 from like t-spawn or something you can't play Dude, go and learn them as you're saying that go I'm and learn them i'm just imagining sony guys sitting in a server with this fucking new player as they qualify for fpl like okay and now you need to throw this smoke <laughs> go throw it like just straight up just quizzing these guys in a private server be fucking hilarious call it an fpl license or some shit i don't know <laughs> like i will create like I'll I'll do this. I'll create like this licensing system. Yo, you gotta pay fifty bucks. You gotta you gotta come to me. You have to prove that you know all these smokes, and then at the end of it, you get your license. <laughs> Fuck it. I'm gonna pay you smoke tax. I was about to say, is there going to be multiple licenses? Like, there's a smoke license, there's a rotations license, there's a comms license. They have to oh, pass God. all three licensing, or is it? Are you going to group it all into one big license? It's if like you do it like that, you make more money, right? If you get your three, That's and it could be saying. a, it could be a recruitment thing licenses. as well. Like when yeah. you join a pro team. Oh, have you got your FPL smoke license? Well, sorry, guys. <laughs> you know, yeah, this is this is a money spinner, Josh. I mean, I think Josh actually brought up a really big point. And sort of Davey, where like it's it almost literally makes more sense to just not play on a team, like for oh, a lot for of those sure. players. You know, what I mean, that's like the problem is when you can't even blame them. Face it, got into this fucking pissing contest, right? Like, imagine, remember the old money ten man's? It was like fucking ten dollars you're playing on the line. Now we're playing for like five grand if you want to, and it's like it it the quality has gotten worse, and it's just I don't know. These well, kids I mean, will make part way of... more money just pugging FPL and not getting better at the like the actual like getting better at playing on a team. They'll make way more money just pugging FPL pl and just playing to win money than they would by joining an MDL team and trying yep. to go pro. They'll make so way more money. Here's two points. One, when you're playing money ten mans, you put something on the line. Yeah, you're so if you're something putting yourself, something yeah. on the line, you're gonna fucking try. You're not gonna just be like, eh, whatever, fuck it. The second thing is that uh when you're when you're playing FPL, like it's very hard to like you need to be a fucking liability for your team in order to not have like a at least fifty percent win rate. And if you're getting like a fifty two plus or fifty five plus percent win rate, all you have to do is literally queue more than everyone else and you're gonna make the money. You're gonna make top three, top five, and bare minimum top 10 top 10 okay it's not that much it's like what 450 500 bucks in a week so you're getting like two grand a month still two grand a month for just pugging cs that, that's and, above minimum wage right like i mean for just pugging cs and, and it you know potential to go higher than that but literally all you have to do is just spam the queue you don't have to be good you just have to end up on a good player's team and hope that your opponent's team has people that aren't good like you that's straight up it it's not like there's 10 like nine sick players in a game and then there's one bad person it's like there's four like really good players then there's like another or sorry there's like two to four good players and there's another like two to four like okay players and then there's like one to four like why are you here Yep, that's pretty much just the way all those games go now. And it's just, it's like pushed all the good players away from it. Here's another way to spin it. 
MDL teams, if they go and get signed by an org to play an MDL, they're probably on around a thousand dollars a month salary, somewhere between like two hundred to two thousand dollars a month salary. So yeah, if you're getting like tenth place in FPL four weeks in a row, you're making as much as an MDL player. Yeah, exactly. Like I said, it, and you don't have to. And, and you don't have to, like, to do the boring practice and the yeah, exactly. game review and the team and like talk. learn how to get better and, and like, deal with other people's personalities. Yeah, I just want to play and shoot my gun. It's one of the few reasons that I have sort of any kind of um, respect for uh, Jason R, right? Because I think he's a weird motherfucker. But uh, at least when he had the option to join Optic, he said, listen, I turned down joining that team because why the fuck would I? <laughs> Having this community and have, being like a, a regular streamer and being involved in like, you know, FPL, what, what, whatever it was at the time, Rank S or FPL, he used to grind. He's like, that's worth way more. And it's less hassle. Like, fuck it. Why wouldn't I? He's like, yeah, okay, that's yeah, true. Yeah, he, he was always, all, he was always, uh, he was very money driven. I mean, I'm not even saying that as a bad thing. Like he was, he was always super upfront about all of that with everybody. It was like, yeah, I'm trying to get rich. This is, this is what I'm trying to do. I couldn't do that. I'd be like, fuck yeah, let's compete, let's go. But then why do you throw? It's all right, dude. No one's gonna say it. I'm I'm hovering over the chat with a sandwich in my hand right now. Like I'm gonna get him to you, buddy. Don't you worry. Wait, I think a patine. You have a sandwich too? Yeah, I got a breakfast sandwich and a side order, like a small little pot of patine with cheese curds on top. It's unbelievable. It's disgusting. It's gonna I be thought, the one thing I eat all day. I thought, I thought I deserved a treat. Poutine, it's like it comes. It's gravy and cheese curds. That's what poutine is. So it's like yeah, saying yeah. tuna fish sandwich, right? It's like I know yeah. it's fish. There's no like land tuna. I just, hmm. I'll fucking I'll I'll complain to the fucking uh, restaurant for you, Josh. I mean, okay. you know you have a redundancy in your in your menu, sir. So I'll tell him, buddy. I'll tell him. Thank you. Thank you. Even actually, fucking Canadian. They have to they have to specify it to the Americans because they don't realize it's like just so you know this is actual cheese curds. This yeah, no, it, it, it was like a cheese. Canadian restaurant. They were definitely cheese curds, by the way. They were yeah, that's good. Fucking cheese curds. Right on. That is important. You want dark gravy too? What kind of gravy did you get with it? Well, it was uh, almost black, man. It was fucking mm -hmm. real dark. That is important. That's important. Very, very beefy body to it. It was good. Yeah, I'll get back to mutant, guys. No, <laughs> no, no ASMR. <laughs> you, know, you know everyone loves the ASMR streams. That's what I'm saying. So, Josh, any MDL players... That are in FPL or any players in MDL in general, you see that are uh, coming up pretty quick. Any anyone you got your eyes? On? Um, there's a there's a few. I'm I'm actually quite impressed with some of the players that kind of ascended relatively quickly through the tiers. So like, you know, uh, a couple seasons ago they were MDL and now they're pro. And I never really had the chance to really look at them because I was competing. I was like with Ghost, for example, and I just stopped playing FPL when I was on Ghost because there was a lot of like low tier stuff going on and picking up bad habits and all that stuff just didn't appeal to me and then also I just didn't really have time to do it to do it in my schedule. There were a lot of players though um, that are now on like pro teams or top MDL teams that are just like these guys are actually pretty good they just need to you know have the right mix of players or they need to you know, maybe they got unlucky with something, whether it be timing with with something or they got fucked out of a roster shuffle or maybe they were under a contract and uh, the org owner held them under like a uh, hold them held them hostage and they couldn't get out and get on a better team because of that, even though they had an opportunity to like there's all sorts of factors that play into it. I like this uh, strap by Evangar, though, with they do the exit with the. Uh, the smoke that lands on the elevator box, it creates like a one way so that they can peek sight and also towards game helper while they cross and scale up cat. They did it to us and the first time I saw it, I'm like, what the fuck? It's probably easier to counter now that you that it's known, but I think it's still pretty strong. Yeah, it's been good watching um, you know, a lot of talents that you've played with down the years blossom into real talents like that Bogdan guy, you know, it's only a matter of time before. <laughs> You mean attacker, a matter of time before that attacker, motherfucker is on a top Attacker team, one. He, did you hear his story? No, what's up? Oof. Oh, okay. So he apparently changed his name. 
uh, to to something else. I think it's a Taco one. I might be wrong though. It is. No, it is. And then right. and then he was like trying to play in Maine. He was supposed to go to some land in Florida and then like dodged it. And but yeah, he he apparently just like still just sucks so much. And people seem to think that it was like I destroyed his potential career or something. It's like, dude, I was literally playing Overwatch. I didn't play rank S at all. I came back in the middle of a month to rank S and people were like everyone was saying how bad that guy was as a player and I hadn't played with him at that point. I'm like, wait, surely he can't be that bad. And then finally when I played him like that last week of the month that's when like all that shit went down where i ended up making the video just like watching him play peeking out in the open just reloading just wide open like peeking out wide to throw grenades all that stuff mm. that's when i made Man, that, that video, video was one of the got... funniest things i've ever seen though because like i i like if that was happening in like fucking you know what like matchmaking i'd be fucking tilted right like it, it's yeah. so unbelievably bad like what he was doing it was like holy shit but then, yeah, so so he got removed at the end of the month, which was a week later, and people are like, well, it was just Steel Steel complaint and got him removed. Like, people seem to think I have this fucking power or something. I was about over to say. Like, every company ever. Complained. It's like, dude, yeah. if I had the power, trust me, things would be a lot different. <laughs> I was about to say, it's hilarious. People are like, oh, Steel got him removed, like, as if any of them are just fucking, oh, what does Josh think about this player? Oh, Josh is mad at him? He thinks he's bad? All right, get him the fuck out of here. Like... Never yeah, we, we we were actually gonna uh, promote this guy on our uh, on our stream, and so, but if Josh hates him, then fuck it, dude, he's got to go. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Watching some of the nuke matches, Steel's had to play recently. A lot of players wouldn't be in there anyway if he actually had. Oh boy, that's another thing that really triggers me about FPL. It's like, let's say you have a lobby where there's like four good players, and then one person that kind of like doesn't even compete. Please. Don't take important spots if you're not going to talk. <laughs> There's a lot of players that will just need certain play positions on maps that are way more important than others. For example, if you're playing Inferno, the player that plays lane, or if you're playing Mirage, the CT connector player, those are way more important spots than, than like bitch rolls are, where you don't need to talk, you don't need to orchestrate things, right? A lot of it's like orchestrating what needs to happen next. So if you're an opera, you need to orchestrate what's going to happen. If you're in a certain position, you get smoked out, you have to reposition, you have to orchestrate, I'm coming here, but you're already there, so you go and do this instead. So if I'm an opera on CT Mirage and start window, I get smoked out, I have to rotate somewhere else. I'm coming B, can you rotate A, or can you double up cat, or I'm rotating ticket, can you push into sight? You need to kind of calm that. You can't just walk around not thinking about things like that. The same thing with the connector players, though, on Mirage. You can't just be a connector player and no calm. You have to say what's happening. They're out mid, let's give it up, let's push a ramp together. You know, you can't just be like, oh, they're out mid, and then you just sit there hiding behind the spam spot and just wait for them to just go up cat and kill your teammates. You have to be proactive. And there's a lot of players in FPL that will take those spots, but not talk. And the only reason why they want those spots is because there's more action. There's more people to shoot. And it's just like, dude, this game's not about shooting people. When are you going to figure this out? Well, never, of course, because <laughs> they're what we call morons. So you're just going to have to accept that there's a limited cranial capacity. This is why you need people, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the big brains to come in and basically, like, okay, I, I, I got to just work with the moron, become one with the moron, understand the moron, utilize the moron. I mean, that's like, that's uh, a big part. That's it's big not part PC to later, say dude. moron these days. You have to say what they are, young talent. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. My bad. <laughs> my bad. My bad. My bad. Yeah, young talent, but they're 25. <laughs> yeah, the classic 25-year-old young upcoming, up and coming talent. Yeah, I love it. We had that when um, when I was like criticizing uh, Jax, who, by the way, did have a good major uh, over at G2, and I was like, you know, you don't just suddenly get good at 27. You don't just suddenly step up to the pro level at 27. Like it's super rare. Obviously, he had a really good major. He's probably one of the best things about G2. But people were like saying to me. Jax is an up-and-coming talent. He's 20 fucking seven. Like, fuck off, man. He's like three years out from retiring. What are you talking about up-and-coming? You might be having a good run of form, but you cannot be an up-and-comer at 27. Come the fuck on, dude. See, I think Ridiculous. that age isn't a, a restriction or a factor or anything like that. And maybe I just I feel like, because I'm, 
because I'm 30 this year, right? So I'm maybe I'm just no like, fucking way. I feel differently. Yeah, dude. <laughs> no, you're right? still okay. like you're still like 24 in my fucking brain. Yeah. When you're 30 so, next year, like what I the think fuck? I first met you when I was like 20. Uh, when was that? 2011 was DS Rec. Yeah, that's eight years ago. Person, yeah, yeah, so I was 21 at that point. Jesus Christ. Right? So I think like because. I don't feel like I'm. If anything, I feel like I have so much more hunger and 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 energy left in me to like in the tank. I'm not like fizzling out. The only thing that age will really restrict you of is when you start doing things like you're settling down, you're getting a family, yeah, you, you yeah. you're starting a family. You need to be at home a little bit more to be with the wife. You need to be um, not traveling as much. You can't be on the road as much because you have to take care of the kid. Whatever like that. That's the only thing that i think age does beyond just like if you've been doing it for 10 15 years maybe you're starting to approach some some sort of burnout but if you start like if you start at 22 and let's say you're just like a rich kid and you have the money and you start later in life and you don't have those responsibilities and you kind of want to live the bachelor life still i don't think age is a factor so I, I don't know much about Jax's story, like 27, okay, has he been competing for the last seven years and he only made his break the last couple of years? In which case I'd say, uh, yeah, maybe you don't like become a superstar this late in your career, but that's, I think that people that do become superstars show that potential really early on, right? Yeah. It's like yeah, when yeah, you yeah, look at, yeah. at, at newer players, like if you want to use Stewie as an example, you could tell by talking to him about the game and seeing how he acted seeing how he like put the time into like learn and get better and like seek out answers and do demo reviews anything like that you could see that he had an understanding of the game which was deeper than than most other people and you could see that that combined with his mechanical skill and hunger was the reason why he was able to ascend so quickly yeah and most people that are superstars do that as well or not superstars but like good enough to be on like top 10 teams mm. Yeah, man, it's crazy. I, like, I, you know, it, it's weird because it's like, I, I think that puts you in a very similar age, if not the same age, to Forrest, right? And you know, you like, I don't, I don't think of you in, in this sort of same way. I think of him as like a guy who's like, you know, definitely coming to the to the end. Um, and it's showed. You know, he had a real poor performance at this major, but like, you're just some, you're still some fucking baby face motherfucker, dude. Like, it's like ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know. Don't know what kind of genes you got going on, dog. But you fucking, yeah. I I, I didn't think of that at all. Like, yeah, I honestly but, thought he was like twenty six. I'll be honest. Yeah, exactly, right. At most, at most. I don't know why. Like, how old's Mo? He's like what, thirty two, thirty one, thirty two. He's like turning thirty two or thirty three, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you definitely won the the battle of aging there, Josh. <laughs> Out of all the great battles you've had with Mo, like you won that one, man. You won that one for sure, for real. Like, I love that motherfucker still. He's a crazy fuck. I know you don't talk to him no more, but good memories. I was actually uh, when I was on Ghost, I was I was out in California for uh, a large part of the, and they had a, a physical trainer there for primarily for the PUBG team, but oh yeah. They, extended it to whatever CS players were there. So my, well, only two of the CS players plus the coach were there. No one else decided to move, so that was cool. And I I went, um, he was there three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I went all three days every, every time he was there that I wasn't traveling for an event. And I felt like in the best shape of my life at like the, the oldest I was in my life as well. So that was pretty good. You still got I, it, man. Still got it. Haven't I mean, been for three months though, so. I'm I'm getting into the late thirties, so my body's starting to just fucking break down. Like it's just ridiculous. All the years of hard drinking and hard partying, all my internal organs are all fucking chewed up. Fucking all my knees, my back, my neck, <laughs> like I'm fucking absolutely wrecked. Like it's so ridiculous. I'm like, yeah, I feel like I'm fucking fifty or sixty. Or whatever. You make you know what your life, Josh. Well, I think uh, <laughs> drinking helps with that. Just drink more. 
Oh yeah, thanks, Josh. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is this, this is the secret ploy to get me back. He's like, no, Richard, no, 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 no. I think you can drink through the agony. Yeah, just push keep through, drinking. No, no, no. It's fine. It's totally fine. What do you mean you've got a, a heart arrhythmia? Just keep drinking. It's fine. It's yeah. just like, how are you homeless? Just buy a house. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. The, just be, be happy. Fine, just sleep rough for a couple of weeks. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. You get back on your feet, Rich. Don't worry about it. Why even bother? Fuck the rent, Rich. That's ridiculous. Yeah, and with friends like that, man, that's uh, that's how you end up in bad bad spots. <laughs> oh. oh, there's another aim lock from Magisk. There's one for the clips there. Vax sucks. <laughs> get on it, guys. He's cheating. We all saw it, guys. We all We all know what's going on. We all know that there is a giant conspiracy at the top of CS. That basically everyone is allowed to have a cheat, at least one cheater on their team. It's kind of like having an enforcer in hockey, right? You just have your designated Fuck. cheater. Valve agree with it. They and, and, and as long as everyone's watching the majors, we just we just let it all happen. I know about it. You know, Steel knows about it. Davey knows about it. We're all. Who was your designated cheater in your teams, by the way, guys? Who, who was yours, Davey? I had Moz back online for a season. <laughs> Moz back from nowhere. Uh, yeah, he actually was a designated cheater. Love him. I think Davies was uh, Professor Chaos, right, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> I called him the worst CS pro I've ever seen during a live broadcast. I think it might have been that when you were playing. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I, I still think, yeah, I know he was he like a super cool guy. Um, but I, I like wouldn't let up about that. He did some things like what was that tactic you had in Inferno where Professor Chaos would just never buy a gun? He just played Mag Seven, yeah, in halls, in yeah. apartments every round. That was it. Like he no, just didn't buy a gun. The thing about Andrew, the thing about Andrew was he was convinced oh, there was something. Now. What? We're going first names now. Yeah, I mean, so well, the thing like about that. Professor Chaos. Yeah, there you the go. thing that about Professor Chaos. Chaos. Yeah, no, actually, I prefer Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Chaos is so like, fucking lame. I actually think like... Andrew is a much more manly <laughs> name so than too, Professor like, Chaos. Like, like... Okay, anyway. So the thing about PC was that he was convinced that there was something wrong with his game. Like, that it would slow down. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm telling you, dude. <laughs> I'm the telling you, shit people look, tell look. themselves. No, no, dude. Oh, no, 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 no. Listen, he wasn't. He, he was super. I don't know how to explain it. He he thought that his game would slow down at times, and he didn't know why. And he found some. He found a Reddit thread where somebody else was having the same problem, and they couldn't <laughs> fix it. So that's why. So that's why he played with like a ridiculously high sense, was like to make up for the fact that his game was slower than everybody else. <laughs> and like, Mental. But sometimes it wouldn't happen. Like sometimes he'd be like, "Oh, it's not happening today. Guys, we're gonna have a good so... stream day." And to be fair, and to be fair, when it wasn't happening, quote unquote, he was way fucking better than normal. The problem was it was happening like all the time. Mate, he the place it was happening was in his fucking yeah, brain, though. Okay, okay, today, maybe, maybe, is no, maybe, but, no, but we told him that. We're like, Andrew, this is all in your head. And he's like, look, even if it is all in my head, I, it's not going out because I'm convinced this shit's happening. So I was like, Brilliant. all right, I mean, fair enough, I guess. Like, At what parts did he even start if I wearing am... the tin foil, the block? Yeah, even if it is in my mind at this point, <laughs> look, it's now reality. I swear, though, I swear, though, like, if, if you know him, like, if you talk to him, he wasn't, like, a super fucking weird guy. Like, he wasn't, like, he, like, he wasn't fucking God. He was just, like... No, I swear, I swear, he was just like, look, man, I don't know how to explain it. When I, when I play sometimes, my game just feels slower. Like, it just feels slower than the, than the other times I play. And I can't fix it. I don't know what the problem is. And I'm just like, all right, man, whatever. So sometimes he would just be like, look, mags, mags are just easier for me to use when my game is slow. So I'm just going to mag stuff. <laughs> oh, God, like, I swear. I thought I swear, it was – because no, because you have to understand, Davey, right? Now that I know the truth, this is what blows my mind. I hope everybody who's listening to the stream understands, right? The disconnect with what players tell you to what is really happening, right? What you what Splice used to say is Professor Chaos is such a fucking pro. He buys the Mag Seven, so we because uh, it it's a it's a tactic. It bolsters our economy. And it really helps the team out. And he's a, he's an expert in the apartments position where the Mag to Seven said it's most deadly. It, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So 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 that's what they say publicly when when I come out and criticize him for being like you can't just only play one position and only use one gun uh, to justify you can't justify being on a team when you do that. But in reality, he believed his fucking game was slow. And the only thing that counteracted the, the imaginary slowness was the Mag 7. Yeah, yeah, you find out two years later he was just stone cold crazy, dude. 
That's fucking mad. He did that on that land, so too, mad. didn't he, Davey? Like, even on yeah, yeah, no, no, no. no yeah. I'm talking to him about land. This was literally yeah, yeah. Atalanta. No, it was no, like he the... Would say it happened to him all the time. Like, he couldn't... He couldn't he would try so it wasn't even his computer or anything? Yeah. It's just his no, game. PCs no. every time. What if he used other people's PCs? Like, what yeah, if no, he went on that your was PC fine. and played he, on your... He thought it was something wrong with his Steam account. Like, I swear to God. <laughs> so why didn't he get a new Steam account? No, he tried alt accounts and it followed him. Come on! Come on! What do you mean? What do you mean? I I'm Indian know, burial know, drone know, shit, like Simpson style. Know. What the fuck? I know. Like, Listen, guys, I, 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 I'm actually just cursed, guys. It well, turns yeah, out, wish, like, I went to see a psychic. <laughs> they told me I'm cursed. I wish like, I was making it up, Josh. I'm no, no, no. I know, I know Davey, I know you're telling the truth, mate. I know Davey tells no lies. Yeah, I'm, mean, that's so I'm really not making it up. And then one time we were like, at, we were, when we were at MLG, actually, he was he was playing it, and and of course none of us believed him, and we always made fun of him for it. And like, and and one time, and one time, and one time, he, we were we were on land, and he was like, guys, no, come play right now. Look, it just slow down. It just go. Right oh like, oh I swear to God, there was a ghost so just like, now in the basement. No, Where'd it go? Dude, I swear, I swear. So like, me and Arya, me and Arya both took turns like DMing on his PC in the warm up. And we both looked at him, he was like, Andrew, this feels fucking fine. And then he just kind of looked at us, <laughs> sat back down, DM'd for like another 30 seconds. He was like, oh, fuck, it does feel fine now. I swear to God, like, you can't make this shit what up. What do you mean? <laughs> Man, at that point, like, it's one thing having him on your team. You need an intervention at that point, guys. You got to help him. Like, that's so ridiculous. <laughs> like, I feel, so guys, I feel, I feel like, it now. I yeah, really this feel is like fine. I'm putting oh, yeah, him on fine. blast right now. And if we didn't make fun of him for it all the time when he was on the team, I wouldn't even be saying this right now. But, like... He really was a super cool dude, and he like, I don't know. No, like, like, to be fair, I did hear he was nice a funny guy, ass motherfucking and, and no, nice dude. No, he was a funny yeah. guy. He was a cool yeah. guy. And and to, his, to be fair, like, he never bitched about it when we were playing. Like, he was never the guy who was whining about it the whole time. Like, he would he would just, like, let us know before the game started. He's like, guys, I'm probably... I, my game's pretty slow today. Like, I don't know what... Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just uh, did the team meeting. Yeah, 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 just did yeah, yeah. the team meeting. No, no, no. But then during the games, he would never whine. Like, like he whined the least out of anybody on the team. Like, really, he did. And and he was and he was really good tactically, too. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, I, I really feel like I've just been shitting on him now, and I feel bad about no, it. No, no, don't feel bad. That's a wicked story, dude. That's a good one. I mean, look, I, I played in a team uh, with Hoods G, who was kind of like our, our, our equivalent of that. Well, not played in a team. I managed the team, I should say, rather. Uh, basically, every time we lost a game, or every time he had a bad game, he would completely change all of his settings. Every time, without fail. And when I was the manager of the team, a regular occurrence, because like, you had my phone number, all my players did, you know? Regular occurrence, like if we if we bombed out of a LAN, or if he'd had a bad game, but we got through it with the next round, the phone would just be... And he used to do that thing where he'd withhold his number, so it's like... Phone's ringing at 4 a.m., withhold number, like, who's died in my family or whatever. You know, you expect them bad news. Like, so you pick it up, and he'd be like, oh, Gons, uh, yeah, it's George here. And I'm like, oh, God, what is it? What is it? And he'd be like, oh, you know, I had that bad game um, today, so um, what resolution do you think I should change to? And I'm like, George, don't even fucking blame it. I've got no valuable input here. But, of course, you can't say that because you're the manager, so you would just be like, well, I don't know. What do you What do you think? He's going. Oh, you know, I'm on. The, I've gone back to 800 by 600 now, and it feels good. It feels like how I used to. Well, you should totally go with that, then, George. You should totally go with that, and it would just be everything. And oh, yeah, I'm going for the 1.8 sensitivity on like 800, and you would just be sat there, like, you know, and it would get to like 4:30. I'm like, uh, George, you know, we got a game tomorrow. Probably what'll help you is like a good night's sleep or whatever. He'd be like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go to sleep, you know. And then you'd see him the next morning, be like, yeah, I was up all night just messing with my set. And you're like, fucking please, <laughs> like. Please, but yeah, some some players have like like insane psychological ticks almost. Like they get things in their head, and then you know, like Andrew said to you, um, you know, you can't get rid of it. Actually, guys, it's yeah, a real yeah. thing now because I've I've willed it into reality. That's true of all sports. And, and he and he admitted he would admit that too. He was like, look, even if this is all in my head, it's not going anywhere. So we got <laughs> we just got to deal with it. I played on a team with him for uh, for a while. Mm. MTW. Wait, wait. Yeah, Hoods, I was going to say. Uh, yeah, Hoods, you. Oh. Source and oh. early CSGO, yeah. I thought you were talking about Andrew. I was like, what the fuck? No, 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 no. And you never heard about the slow game? Oh. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, with uh, Professor Chaos, like, the thing is, if he was still playing today, he would still have more opportunities to join certain teams because he's eligible to play at majors. That's the, th that's the thing that fucking is so funny to me, is that you... A t an org owner, 
or an investor would rather build a team that would be eligible to play majors but never qualify for one than to play to build a team that would be able to qualify for majors if they were eligible to and qualify for everything else. Yeah, but, but that, this is what I mean. This is why, w with the big shift in the landscape, uh, I don't think that's going to be as much of a priority anymore because it looks like we're all going to get locked into not just uh, leagues, right, but leagues where teams only play in those leagues. So, you know, you might not see Astralis play in this ESL league, right? So suddenly, oh, Astralis aren't there. I can build a team that can win that league, and I will use all the players that are available to me. Who gives a fuck if we go to the majors or not? There's like maybe a million dollars up for grabs, or we can do the Intel Grand Slam, and we won't have to worry about Astralis, or, you know, whichever teams get broke apart. I mean, this is definitely what's coming. Obviously, we know the Blast are going to announce a league because of leaked emails. We know ESL have theirs. We know other... We, you know, you know, it, we, they, there's probably going to be another one. I mean, I'm not listening to anything the crazy manager said, where it's like, there's a franchise league coming from Valve, and you've got to pay $2 million again. This guy's just pulling shit out of his ass, by the way, guys. He's just fucked in the head. But um, Well, yeah, it's because people were poaching his players, <laughs> though, is why he said that. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, again, he was, like, getting, getting mad triggered over something that, like, is just, like, normal. Like, yeah, they just, hey, you had a good tournament. Would you ever play for us? Well, cool. You know, that's... he's poaching them, guys. He's poaching them. But uh, yeah, it was just um, you, you know I, I definitely think like there's there's opportunities in NA now. There's a lot of teams coming back uh, to, to you know that said they wouldn't have CS:GO teams. Uh, you know, like we're gonna see TSM coming back. They're out there talking to free agents right now. There's a, you know there's a bunch of big orgs. I think maybe even um, you might see CLG come back, even though they famously said they wouldn't because they all want a piece of this like you know big circuit. And there's a real opportunity there to build a team that can actually win. Or at least make it to like finals of tournaments and stuff because some of the big teams, especially the big European teams, are not going to be part of this league. So I, I think I think you'll be well positioned, dude. I still don't understand why Ghost fucking broke apart. Honestly, I still haven't really put that together. But that just feels like a, a, a waste given all the progress that was made. You want to talk about it? All John? I will say is I can't wait for my ESL overlords to take over the scene so I can just compete in everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly, man. Well, listen, I don't want I don't want functional monopolies in CS. I've actively exposed a few and tried to shut them down uh, whenever they've been presented. But let's also be real. This weird, like, creepy sort of anti ESL club that's been built. With you know, face it's in there, and you know, PGLs in there, and Starlight is in there. It's not like they're presenting much, like much of an alternative. They're not. It's not that they're against having a monopoly. They're just against DSL having a monopoly. They'd love to have one, yeah. and will actively work towards it. Yeah. Right? I mean, you know, what what was ECS? E ECS was a partnership with Twitch, a partnership with the teams that were co-owners in a brand new thing. They took a bunch of money to to basically create a league to specifically challenge. Uh, ESL with the added bonus of the fact that the the team owners were stakeholders in that league. That what what what's that then? You know, it's it's not like these guys are all fucking altruists. Not by any stretch. It's whoever can win the PR game. Oh, of course. And imagine losing to ESL because they're fucking terrible at PR. They go better in the last <laughs> few years. But if ever you're losing a PR battle to ESL, you need to fucking fire your PR team immediately. Because they, they they still remain some of the you know considering everything they've done for esports they still remain a pretty reviled company. You know? In the CS scene recently though, ESL's actually been like the like the prime guys like they run oh, the sure. best events. They treat yeah. everybody like all the players the best uh, recently yeah. recently anyways in the last two years probably. Before that they were kind of widely uh, disliked, but in the last two years they've made huge strides. As far as community uh, support and community opinion go, yeah, I mean, it, it sort of. You're right. The pendulum has swung back a little bit. Like when I saw all of the, like, you know, people getting pissed off about Star out of this major, there were people posting, going, "Why don't ESL just do all the majors?" It's like, fucking, I don't yeah, know about yeah, that, know, chief. Right? Like, I don't even know. Imagine if you, that you three think years you ago. Want like... that. Yeah, you think you want that, but I don't think you really want that. Well, I, 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 I really do think ESL getting so much better now than they were a few years ago is because of the rise of all those other companies, right? Like the, the, of course, got to stay ahead of the game, right? really drove it. Yeah. 
I think if they had no Shocking. competition, they'd be straight back to their uh, original. No, right? Shocking. Competition encouraging people to be better. Who knew? Yeah. You know, we should take this concept that we learned here first in esports and apply it to like literally everything else in life. I know. Imagine, <laughs> right? Imagine. But uh, but yeah, you know, I'm I'm right there with you, Josh. I'm actually excited about this league. You know, considering like I say in 2014. ESL tried to create essentially an exclusivity league, and let's be clear, it says in black and white in in the leaked contracts when you sign up to this circuit they're doing, you absolutely cannot play in any of these other leagues like ECS or. Um... That's okay. I'm banned from ECS still. <laughs> so so wait, did that never get resolved either? Like I don't understand yeah, that because I even the, had a clear it's not answer. a partnership with Valve at all. Yeah, I haven't even had a clear answer from them. So. When I spoke to Valve, um, uh, I sent them an email just to clarify about like the band situation with uh, regards to coaching at majors, if I were to become mm. a coach for a team. Because I had a lot of coaching offers. And so I, I spoke to them and I, I said, what are the restrictions? They said, you just can't be registered as a player or a coach for the events. We don't care what okay. else you do. You could play in anything else. We don't care. So when I ask Face It, hey, uh, am I banned from ECS still? They'll just say... Yes or no? They won't tell me why, other than they'll have in the rule book Valve ban players not allowed. So that's that's the only thing. So I've I've there's no like reasoning of their own. They haven't made their own ruling. Like we think that match fixing should carry a lifetime punishment with a zero appeal. They haven't said that. They've just said, oh yeah, you're Valve banned, so or you're banned mm -hmm. from majors, so no. But it's it's not a it's not a permanent no. It's a not it's a you're still banned um but it's not permanent but we don't know when it's gonna change so just ask again next season basically i mean it's just so fucked up it's like listen guys like if you'll face it right now right what do you think's gonna have pissed off valve more you letting steel come back and play in your competitions or the god awful fucking major you ran which was an abomination in almost every department let me weigh this up. You're not getting another major. You don't need to pander to the Valve fucking, you know, corporation <laughs> anymore. Just let fucking Josh play. That's fucking so dumb. Like, you know, and listen, again, I'll, I'll talk out of school now because I can. Uh, you know, we, I didn't like it when we did it at E-League, but I had to tow a party line. But we did the same thing. We said, listen, we know we're, we know we got a good chance of getting majors because we've worked very closely with Valve and they're, they're very interested in the idea of a TV company doing a major and really bringing the production level up um, and having someone as big as Turner Sports handle that stuff. Um, so we're going to mirror their bands as sort of a way of... Uh -oh. this got death. And I think, I think I don't support the lifetime ban. I think it's an absurd... I think it's an absurdly harsh penalty, but I'm I'm just one voice in a room, and they're like, you know what, Richard? Like, what you think doesn't matter here because this is about making money at this at this point. So, um, so that basically, you know, that's basically what happened with that. But yeah, the e e ECS keeping you banned is so dumb at this point. When people ask, like in my stream chat all the time. It's just like it's easier to say what I'm still banned from than what I'm um, not banned mm. from. It's like yeah. I'm banned from the majors and ECS. I'm actually yeah. still banned from E League uh, stuff, but they they stopped doing stuff. They had the, like the Invitational this year for like four <laughs> teams or something, something like really small. And then yeah, obviously was, in 2018 yeah. they had the the major and stuff. But um, it's just easier to say yeah these two things. Everything else I'm good to go. Because it's gonna be five years and three months from now. Five Mate, year it's an, anniversary. It, 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 it's so insane. I, I still can't believe it to this day. It's 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 like I say every time we fucking talk about it, man. I, you know, give me the fucking time machine because I would have liked to have really known like Valve's mind before even attempting to write this story. You know, uh, it's just lifetime bans for like like. <laughs> There's people who've literally robbed players. There's people who've assaulted players. There, there's 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 people who've done real heinous shit that no one fucking knows about. We, there's organizations that have serially broken promises, put out bullshit. They're all at majors. 
You know, they're all at majors. They're all allowed. <laughs> he is the Bitcoin mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're owned by ESL, which are running majors. They run it, MTL. It, it, it's ridiculous that, you, you, you know, Valve say they don't want to have a purview. Um... You, they don't want to have a purview to basically do it's the same thing in dota you know they don't there's still not a conduct you know guideline there's still not a a, a ter, you know terms of, oh jesus there's still not a terms of conduct thing a code of conduct for people playing in dota so every time a situation comes up like the cuckoo situation valve sit back and go fingers crossed we won't have to get involved fingers crossed we won't have to get involved you have to get involved it's your motherfucking game it's your motherfucking tournament you have to get involved and 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 you know they 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 don't have a, a a sort of they don't want to enforce a code of conduct for any of their esports games except when it absolutely becomes necessary and i think that's so irresponsible and then when they do that it's like oh you you you've 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 invoked the wrath of valve now so we're going to go completely so far in this direction and do something that's unreasonable and i it just shouldn't be like that man it's like this literally wouldn't be allowed to happen in almost any other sport in the world it's just that simple. There would be a yeah, players' association. There would be the right to an appeal. That, went to, that are getting up to 10 years in jail. The what, sorry? The Australian players are getting up to 10 years in jail. They're not so, going to get so 10 years in jail. So we got lucky. Jail, though. They're not going to get 10 years in jail. I know they can get up to it, but they're going to they're gonna get a they're gonna get a small fine is what they're going to get. Does FXO still play? Um, He's suing Valve. Still? Yeah, oh yeah, he's still going on with that. He um, uh, last time he messaged me about it, he was like asking if I wanted to fucking help promote the lawsuit, and I'm like, dude, I think you're wasting your mother. Uh, yeah, I think you're wasting your motherfucking time. <laughs> Just letting you know in advance. Um, but yeah, Effexio, um, uh was and uh, it's SF is the other guy, is it? Or was he the cheat? I always get mixed up. Uh, was that SF I think the back man? I think SF, SF got banned for cheating. Yeah, he, oh, yeah, he, yeah. He, SF was the bad man. Steam yeah. account, he? Exactly, right? Mm. Yeah, my bad, my bad, my bad. Oh, oh no, no yeah, his, I, it was the two digs. There you go, SEO. It was literally 18. Yeah, it was Uzi. Was it was Uzi's the cheaters. other guy that's helping him. Yeah, so it was, it was the other So it was... So they wanted to cut GMX, and then... Uh, and then GMX, after he got cut from the team, he ratted them out for something yeah. that he was a part of as well, so that they would yeah. get banned. Because at the yeah. time it was indefinite, right? Mm -hmm. And then it turned into permanent. Uh, like I've never, I've never spoken out, but as I said, there are a bunch of fucking top level players that, inarguably, through games, there was people. I don't know if you remember, there was uh, that like Nations Cup that they did, where it was all just like pugging and mixed teams, but all of the, all of the matches were obviously on CS:GO Lounge at the time. That was rife with it. Yeah. Um, that was that was Fuck right. CS:GO it, Lounge. Man. Everyone's like, I miss CS:GO, dude. If people that understood, was a cancer, dude. Yeah. What fucking happened on the daily in like ESC invite and just playing matches? All the delays, all the players getting DDoS, the servers the getting DDoS. DDoS. Like, yeah. it literally you would spend three hours to play a match, and sometimes they would even like get all the IPs because it needed to be on broadcast. And then you would just have to reschedule it for another day. And this is what the people did. If they're losing their bets, they just DDoS players or they DDoS the server. And yep. people would give the people would sell IPs. People would get the IP from having like Mumble or Teamspeak admin find the fucking IP of someone that connects to the Teamspeak because you're having your friends over, you're playing a ten man, you're hosting it on your game server. You do arc on status, you get their IPs. Hey, this person's playing in a match. You want their IP? Give me fifty bucks or something. Guess yeah. what? Someone's getting fucking DDoSed. Yep. Yeah. Of course, all, 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 yeah, all bets were off when the games were stopped due to a DDoS. It wasted everyone's motherfucking time. You or know, sometimes it, yeah. they would, like Josh was saying, they would reschedule the games and then yep. play it off stream, but then restream mm -hmm. like a recording. Like they would record it, stream it, and then put and it up on would CSL. Sell it. Yeah, and, yeah, and people would, would sell the results the of that. Yeah. yeah, and people would yeah. know who won the games. People would tell their friends, like, yeah, we won this game, whatever, whatever. And then you see it up on CSGO Lounge, like, 12 hours later, like, a fucking rebroadcast. Everyone would be like, okay, well, I already know who won. So all their friends go and bet thousands of dollars on the fucking game. It was, it was, and I told really you, I told shit. you, dude, there's, there's literally, you can't let that out. Valve will bet in the whole scene. I had to, I had to stop, uh, working on a story. I think I'm going to put it out eventually. I don't know when, 
But I, I just stopped writing it up because there are players who are active right now that were basically selling information um, and, and uh, you know, like almost like competitor intelligence to like gambling syndicates. You know, they were, they were selling the money and, and they were active on these like private forums where they were like, oh, yeah, we played those guys today and we talked to them after the game and they're going to cut their IGL. They got real problems. So even though they're the favorite to win all these games, don't bet on them because they got internal issues and they're actually not trying. And, you know, they would they would make these posts. These are pro players. They would make these posts for the betting guys and they would get like a cut. You know, they'd get paid for that sort of information. Uh, and, and we're probably betting on the games themselves if we're being honest about it. And this is this is a ton. This is a ton of people still playing now. I'm talking about people that are, that have uh, you know played at majors, and it, it, again, it was like I've said it many times. I buy power basically died for everyone's sins because the scene was rotten to the core. NA had a, a problem with it, but so did EU. And again, it, it went right to the very top. It went right to the very top, especially those supposedly meaningless tournaments. Like the European Cup, you know, whatever the fuck it was oh, called, or the International Cup, where people would put pug teams together and they wouldn't care about the game. So they'd say, hey, let's let's throw a few. Who gives a fuck? You know, it's not really team whatever. You know, it's not really an international tournament. We're never going to play with each other again. So let's throw some. And though that tournament, if anyone wanted to go and, and look at it with a microscope and follow all the betting patterns, that tournament would probably have, I'd say... All told, I think I think there'd be like ten high level pros get banned off the back of that alone, that one competition. But we're not gonna do it now because we've all seen how unreasonable fucking mm -hmm. Valve are, so <clears throat> feels bad. Oh, totally, dude. <laughs> feels bad, man. It's like, I've, it's like I've always said, it's like the biggest, it, it's the most conflicted I've ever felt about anything. That's that's the game right there. Holy yep. fuck. Yeah, this is yep. it. Bust, you guys got a jam time. Like, how are you even going to attempt to try to push long there, Adren? Like, that shit's so... You started 4A, 1B, your B guy just got entried without a single kill. That's a fucking save. This really was a pathetic final. Yeah. Yeah. What do you mean? Don't well, you love I, underdogs? Honestly, fuck. Honestly, Liquid fucked up this entire major. Good job. Yeah. Think about yeah, it. It's, it's all Liquid's fault, dude. They had, fault, dude. They no, had the right. finals in the quarters. Yep. Yeah, because they went 3-2 and fucked bad. up the bracket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would have made the best major, though? Oh, I, I would have said uh, if there was any way it could have happened, but it couldn't because of the bracket. But assuming all the games had gone the way, you know, a Team Liquid Astralis final would have been good. Um, yeah. Team Liquid Vitality could have been good because their matchup always seemed to work. And it would have been nice to see Zewu in a final, right? Just to see, you know, if he, if he could pop off or whatever. But, um, you know, any any combination of kind of like oh, the... Oh, Mouse Sports didn't even get through. Yeah, Mouse Sports didn't Yeah, Mouse get got through. absolutely yeah. fucked up. Mouse got fucked by the draws, yeah. Yeah, their run was stupid. Like, it was reminiscent they, when they Nip had that what, insane Astralis fucking... Astralis and Liquid, I think, right? Yeah. Or was it or somebody else in Liquid? I think it was Liquid and Astralis they lost to, but... Like, N NRG Liquid would have been a good final. If that could have happened as well. I do like NRG. I think they can hold their heads high, but I, I, I definitely feel like they they were absent Italian. for the uh, they were absent for that for the Astralis series. It was really weird. It didn't look like the same team at all. Down goes. Well, right, type GG. James, go. you need to hit that. I know, man. James had a nightmare uh, final. Yeah, it's a shame because yeah, he's had a good tournament. Like that is GG. Miz will disconnect from the server Smell now, guys. Of GG. Peace. Nah, and and as I said at the start of the broadcast, Device, inarguably the MVP of this major. It, 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 like, yeah. he he's the guy. Like for all the talk about simple, all the talk about Zwu, like he just shows how important consistency is. Because when Zwu went missing, Vitality lost. When Simple didn't play God tier, like absolute psycho God tier, he can't drag Navi through a game. Meanwhile, Astralis. They've got this great system in place, but device just at the top of the scoreboard all the time, 
20 frags a game, guaranteed, clutches. Like, this motherfucker's on another planet, right? Like, nipples, just in terms of consistency. Stream. What's that? Oh, wait, you're not watching the Starlight or Broadcast? Oh. There was a stream oh, no. this dude, yeah. Nah, nah, we're just watching the GoTV. Wait, did some guys run up to the booth? Yeah. Like, people from, like, fans? Like, did people you... from, the, from the crowd? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, technically, Jesus technically Christ. that channel should be banned, right, Josh? Yeah. Yep. Well, no, actually, yeah. no, because they came up with their shirts off and it's non-sexual. Oh yeah, they did make it to but, the uh, stage. That is monk. The, the Astralis, uh, after they won, their their hugs, like the team play with the hugs was sick. Like they had three pairings mm -hmm. of two just coordinated hugs at the same time. They wow. practice everything. They fully prepare for every Adam possible Adam. scenario. Yeah, I actually saw a new style of hug too. They're innovating the hugs. <laughs> They're fully, uh, Astralis is com fully innovative and prepared for all scenarios. Um, Zonix looks like he's lost a bit of weight, too. Not a lot, he's still a pretty big guy, but he looks like he's lost a little weight. Yeah, he's I, I think he's like, slide that in there. Cap. Nah, saying, he, he's still big, he, though. But... Well, I mean, he's, he's getting, he's getting to that age he's where, he's yeah, he's boy, getting but... to that age where carrying that amount of weight oh, is uh, definitely not going yeah. to, it's, it's to not viable. Dangerous. Yeah, it's not viable in your mid thirties onwards um, to be like. Cause I mean, he was three hundred and fifty pounds, right? It is like heaviest. It's like, yeah, you got to shave those pounds off. Like even getting back below three hundred will fucking extend your life. So, yeah, for sure. Good luck to him on that. Um, okay, guys, there it is. What did I tell you? Boring final, two zero guaranteed. Um, Astralis making history. Uh, they got the, the greatest core in the game right now. People winning four majors, uh, three majors on the bounce. It's a legacy all in and of itself, even if they aren't the number one team right now. Turns out, maybe they are. Who fucking knows? Player break was absolutely uh, crazy. Uh, some thoughts, Josh, since it's your uh, esteemed guest. Yeah, um, that is a shit final. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong, buddy. It was a, it was a rough one. As I said, man, I don't blame you. Go walk those fucking dogs because it's a lot better than um, than watching that first map. It was, it was painful. Uh, so yeah. Uh, what about you guys? Are the guys in the chat, Vince, Jackie, Flom, Davey, thoughts? I think he summed it up perfectly. If you ask yep. me, I agree. <laughs> what a fucking just completely, like just what a terrible way to end an event. Well, look, let's um, let's actually talk about this. Uh, just quickly as a concept, I haven't seen the viewership numbers, but I mean, first of all, it was it was going to be impossible for Starlighter to break viewership with an Astralis and Vanguard final. Yeah, they must have, yeah, they yeah. must have been. No, they didn't stand a chance. They honestly yeah, they did. They honestly put on a good show. Like their stage is sweet. Like they, did, they yep. had a cool opening ceremony. Like they actually did a really good job. They just got sometimes, Holy as shit. you know, in CS. TOs get fucked by the matches, and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you there, Davey. SLNXC, thank you for the 100 gifted subs, buddy. Your generosity's been out of control over the whole uh, No Majors Club, man. Really fucking appreciate it. I did see a few other gifters. We're going to do some dono reads before we turn off the stream, and uh, we're going to get into some of the big subs and, and give shout outs to all the people who uh, donated. But again, uh, SLNXC is one of the most fucking generous people we got in the uh, channel. He's been great over the No Majors Club, so. Thank you so so much for that, um, but yeah, like I, 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 I there's going to be a lot of talk in the next few days because I think it dropped to like half a mil there. It, it's probably going to be the lowest viewership final we've had in a long time at a major. Do they still do souvenir boxes for viewers and shit? Uh, yeah, yeah it's kind of different though. You don't just get drops for watching. You have to like buy a pass and then activate the. You unlock achievements by watching games, and then at the end, if you've done your pickums and it all lines up, you get to pick three souvenirs retroactively from like three maps of your choice or something. Okay, so yeah, that's probably gonna hurt the viewership numbers compared to previous majors then too, because those used to have just you watch on Twitch and you have your Steam account linked to it, you've got it. You watch and go TV, you've got it. Yeah. That's definitely, he's got confetti in his mouth. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I, I think I think back, like, the Boston Major, which, you know, this is an ancient history. That was, like, 1.3 mil on, on the Twitch channel. That's a, that would be a lot. Yeah. I don't, I don't so remember the actual They won't be him. breaking that shit now without the, uh, without the drops for watching like it used to be. Like, there's just, like, the, I don't know how they're going to 
especially with a shitty final like that, they just had no chance. <laughs> they had absolutely no fucking chance. So, yeah, it's pretty pretty crazy to, to think. So there's going to be a lot of talk about that. I, I, I definitely feel sorry for Starlight. A lot of stuff went wrong for them that was beyond their control. Um, they don't deserve complete absolution for some of the things. Uh, but um, they, and they handled some stuff terribly. Hey, Eric? Hey! Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, oh. yeah. We're going to get into on that. The stage, Rich. Who's on stage? Nikolai Ihom. Uh, they just called him out oh, yeah, onto the hey, stage. They called him out. He can't, like... Ah, oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and now, yeah, we none of this would be possible without Satan! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> All hail Satan, guys! A big shout out for the devil. Yeah, my soul's gonna burn in eternal damnation, but thanks, Nicola. Uh, Satan, thank you. Fuck me, dude. What a nightmare. Eh? All right, let's do some donation reads. Um, and, uh, and yo, yeah, well, listen, uh, before you go, dog, uh, yeah. again, thanks a lot for coming about a final. You know, I love you, man. I miss you. And, uh, you know, I hope um, you get on a good team. I'll definitely ask the question for you when I have that meeting with ESL, and I'll, I'll hit you up in a couple of days. Cool. Yeah, I appreciate that a lot. All right, take care of yourself, man. I always get worried when I see you stress. Like, I don't want you to burst a blood vessel. Okay, I'll... Uh... I'll update you. Yeah, uh, keep me keep me appraised of your health because I'm okay, just worried I'll... that one day it's gonna be like <laughs> I'm gonna look on Deserto and it's gonna be like streamer has aneurysm okay. <laughs> while playing CS:GO and it's gonna be you and I don't want that. All right. You know, so the please. thing is though, Deserto already puts that shit out as like clickbaity shit. Like, uh, oh yeah, streamer, yeah. Did it. It's like, bro, how are you gonna have like actual like quality writers to put out some articles for you and then just destroy it with all just. Bullshit. Because that's how bait. that's how we get paid. It's the the clickbait funds the good stuff. It was the same at the Daily Dot, homie. It's like it's just how they do it. It's how you got to do it in this day and age. So, that's but gross. yeah, just anyways. Uh, yeah, don't be don't be that guy. And uh, I'll talk to you in a couple of days, buddy. All right, see you, stay safe. Stay safe. No worries. Be well. Yeah, I'm gonna right, head out too before you do same. your donor no reads. All right, man. Yeah, yeah. Look, you're all gonna go face, play face. matchmaking now. Try and watch yeah, you the wanna, taste. You wanna, of come? Terrible you wanna come play? You wanna join us, Richard? Uh, no, dude, because I'm going to be leveling a dwarf. But what I will do is, if you are you going to stream, Eric? Because I'll obviously uh, I'll I'll do a raid for you. Oh yeah, fuck yeah! No, I fucking love raids. All right. All Everyone, stay in the chat. No I also it. love raid. Yeah, <laughs> 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 oh, what a callback, man! All right, you guys, go enjoy your game. Um, I'll uh, I'll we'll we'll hit you up when we raid you in a bit. And again, thanks for being part of the NMC the the entire time. Hope you'll come back for meme review as well, guys. Uh, oh, I don't course. know when we'll do it. No, we'll be in the next. Uh, probably gonna be in you the just, next day or two. Me and Sam are gonna take a break. With a, you just messaged me a day in time. Before you know I get out of here, hold on. Richard, yeah, we'll give you like 24 dinner. hours notice. Richard, dinner, pick uh, Tuesday or Wednesday. You have to pick a day. I'm not letting oh, you out. Oh, God. Okay, dude. Tuesday okay. or Wednesday. Tuesday or Wednesday. When do you want? You're, I'm gonna uh, put you on the spot right now. Uh, shit, I gotta fly out somewhere. Wait, wait, wait let me check the calendar. Cause I don't check know it. Fucking, I'm checking it. I refuse it, I'm checking to it. let you leave before we grab dinner. Yeah, well, you, you, say, you, you say dinner. Can we not just go somewhere and get shit faced? I just like can we pretend that we ate dinner. Can we do that? Shit, that's fine. Yeah, that's yeah fine. okay, what good. Let, uh, okay, let me let me look at the calendar. Um, I got Eric a little shit face last night. Yeah, I do. That bottle's gone. Rip, rip the <laughs> Japanese whiskey. All right, let's let's tentatively say Tuesday. All right, say no more. Because I don't think we'll be doing by the numbers on this Tuesday. Because I think Duncan will be fucking wrecked. So. Yeah. Sounds good. But, uh, all right, cool. It's a date, big man. Fuck yeah. All right. All later, right. Much love to all you, right. buddy. See you later, guys. Uh, everybody, make sure everybody in the chat gives a big thank you to Richard and Sam for putting on this show for the entire yeah, major. Yeah, all the effort clap. and work they put into it. Let's get some claps in the chat, everybody. Big Worship me. <laughs> Worship big round of me. Applause. Big round of applause for the boys and all the work they put in for this whole major. So, Richard and Sam, thank you so much for putting on the show for everybody and inviting everybody here. Yeah, yeah they woke same up goes, early man. For Renegades ends. Remember that. <laughs> yeah, Renegades exactly. That was the sac that was a that. sacrifice. Uh, but yeah, make sure make sure you follow Flom on Twitch. Make sure you uh, follow Davey and all the Peaks Advantage stuff. He's grinding out some great podcast content right now. So go follow him. Um, we could we couldn't have had the No Majors Club without them. So thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate it.
Much love to you both. No problem. Yep. See you later. Love you guys. Man. See you. Cheers. Right. Let's do these dono reads. Um, and then we'll say farewell to the other guys. Obviously, we got Vince still here with us. We got Seaside still with us. What a, what a what a breakout performance for his first no mates <laughs> club Seaside. Is that? <laughs> um, yeah. He's gone back. He, He's oh, an yeah, absolute scumbag, of course, but he's, he's entered into uh, the, the stuff of legends. And, of course, Jackie, who made uh, the last No Ages Club so memorable uh, so with his uh, persistent homelessness. Um, <laughs> That's what I do. Uh, okay. Well, thanks to Yogurt96 for the uh, $10. Yeah, look, I'll just say the reason we didn't read the message out was because we'd been talking about it as a thing that's actually happening to someone else that we know. And... Uh, my advice is talk to uh, just medical people. I, I like really don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Science is my Achilles heel. I don't know. I don't even know like how gravity works and stuff. Like I'm like I'm like insane clown posse. You know what I mean? Just got another day. Hello. Have you seen Hello. that? By the way, where the bottom of the trophy fell out, it. and the trophies literally just fall into pieces on the stage. Um, it fell to pieces. Really? Service here for a change, yeah. please. Trophies literally broke when device. Hello. Did, there we go. Did they, did they, did they, did they cut out or something, back. or was it just the server? You just disappeared. So, what happened to the trophy? People are spamming the trophy. Device lifted it up and it, its ass just fell out. Like it just <laughs> perfect. Fell what a what a great metaphor for the whole fucking uh, the whole major. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. Uh, so I uh, appreciate uh, the support anyway, uh, my friend, uh, Yogurt96. Uh, Dust more set, $1. I'm laying next to my bucket of fish heads right now. Plenty of sucking. Calm down. Uh, good. That meme's never going to go away, by the way. I hope Dust realizes that. Uh, record big on Steam. Good to see you back. It's 420. Would a double elimination last stage prevent a poor major final? I think if you look at the double elimination system they have at TI, I think you always get lit games. Uh, but it was certainly in the later stages. Stakes are high. Um, and, and generally, the team that battles back through the, like, lower bracket, uh, you know, it's almost like going into the final, like, you can't just underestimate them, even though they sort of were the weaker team and had the harder route because they've had to battle so hard and, and they get extra games under their belt and stuff. So, uh, listen, I, I like Double Elim. I used to like it when we used to run Double Elim back in the day, and then we moved away from it. Might be time to give it another go. But I basically say, and I'll say it all, all like for, from now until we try it, take the TI format, do it for CS, watch your tournament get appreciably better. Just do it. It took them a long time over at Valve to basically get the, the perfect format for Dota. It absolutely will work for CSGO, 100%. Um, so thanks for the donation and your continued support, Reykjavik on Steam. Reaps, $5. Is Astralis the Patriots of CSGO? Also, everyone was clowning on AB yesterday, and now everyone is scared now that he's at the Patriots. Rip, well, that's just how it works, isn't it? You see, when you let a great player go, which, by the way, I think his position was untenable at the Raiders, you have to understand there's going to be another team that's going to swoop in, and your loss will be their game. That's how it rolls in the NFL. I think there was a lot of people worried because, uh, you know, Brady obviously didn't have Gronk anymore. He didn't have his go-to guy. Now they've got an unbelievable bunch of receivers there. Um, and, you know, watch the Patriots. I mean, it's guaranteed playoffs for me, I, you know, even with all the stuff that's been going going on um but um you know they could even they could conceivably make the the super bowl i think and i think ab is it, it's a good pickup for them in their situation even though they're gonna have to move around the salary cap and everything to make it work uh you know whether he'll whether whether he'll still be acting like a fool i don't know i don't because i don't think i don't think uh brady belichick i don't think i don't think the patriots will put up with any shit either i think you'll be told on the way in you better fucking appreciate this for what it is uh, but the Raiders, it's a different prospect. I think there's always something kind of, you know, I said this as a Raiders fan. There's like a clowny element to the Raiders. Like we never do anything right. We we have the right idea, but the execution sucks. Or we execute, but the idea is nonsensical. That's just the Raiders way. It's been that for as long as I've been a fan of them. Um, you know, we're a great franchise with a great history, but we just fuck. Right, he's gone again. We just fuck. <laughs> We just fuck. Which is having a lag. Dust more. <laughs> dust <laughs> more. All right. Dust. Hello. No, You're everyone's fucking. dead. I don't know. Okay. I'm, I'm all right. 
He's trying. I see him lighting up. Yeah, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm back now. Uh, it's really weird because I can hear you the entire time. Scary. So, uh, uh, can you guys hear me now? Yeah, I can again. Hear you now. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Let's do these don't know reads quicker then, because I don't. I might need to restart my internet, or maybe it's a Discord thing. I don't know. Uh, so thanks a lot. Um. So to answer your question, yes, Astralis of the Patriot to see us go. Uh, Firefly, uh, ten dollars. Vincent, Steve, Bruce, a romance like no other, like Dustin and his girlfriend touching each other. Mister Sam Bainlaw Davis is pressing the buttons, looking for an oiler who can spread his buttocks. Everyone knows this major sucks. Anyway, Richard, here's ten bucks. Nice poem. Not pretty bad. good, right? You like that one? Oh, that's all right. All right, good. Good. Appreciate it, Firefly. I thought it was really good. One of the better poems we've had. Appreciate the $10. Mo TV, $1. Hey, Vince. Thank you so much for recommending the John Joe Shelby Fleshlight. It feels so fucking amazing. You have no idea. I just didn't receive my true Geordie full mask mouth gag after using code <laughs> VINCEL. Can you help fix this, please? Thanks, dude. We'll get right on it, mate. We're 100% on it, Mo. Don't you worry. Yeah, uh, big... right out, dude. <laughs> big Dave, 1986. Big Dave. $10. Last hype train. Shout out to everyone who's been involved with yeah. the No Major Club over the past few weeks. It's been emotional, GG. Can we show the clip yeah, of Big yeah, Dave? Yeah, we've got a video of Big Dave. So this is Big Dave from ESL1 Cologne 2019. And he's in the bottom left. There he is. That is IRL Big Dave hype train. Get yeah, those motherfucking sloths in the game. Mm. <laughs> he really is Big Dave. He really is hyped, mate. What a fucking Mine. lad. That's what makes Countess yeah. right great, man. You were capped a bit to that clip oh, as well, weren't you, Sam? Great, but I love it. He's so landed. Like, he's just living it. Pure That's fucking it. Big Dave. What a fucking community we got over here, man. What a legend Big love Dave big is. Dave. So thanks. You you helped uh, make the No Matrix Club a big part of why yeah. it was special this time around. Hope you'll be back for the next one, Big Dave. Much love to you. Mate96, $2. What Steel Series did to me is unforgivable. Fuck Steel Series. So, uh, we'll, <laughs> so. The No Majors Club will not be brought to you by Steel Series. Uh, shout out to you too. I hope you get your problems resolved with them. Uh, Signy to Gates 91, $10. Cheers for helping me get through 13 hour work weekends. Uh, top notch singing from Sam. He has got a set of lungs on him. The notes aren't always perfect, but he'll fucking belt it out with effort. <laughs> he'll, he'll say he'll sing it with feeling. And 13 hour week work weekends are fucking AIDS, my friend. So uh, I'm glad that we helped get you through. Um, enjoy some time off. Milky AU, two dollars. See you next major boys. Final bong for Sam. I'm sure Sam will be having Cheers, one Milky. as soon as we turn this uh, this stream off. Uh, Foreign Gamer, five dollars. Thanks for the amazing community stream, Rich. Great to have you in the CS scene. Can't wait for the Overwatch League and the Call of Duty League reports. Also the NIP report in the works. Keep up the great work and never leave us, Rich. Well, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try not to, but uh, remember, I'm, I'm there's only so many hours in the day. Uh, there will come a day where Richard has to think about Richard. Uh, I keep saying it, I keep floating with it, I always come back, but um, eventually I am going to have to go out and, and do something for myself and, you know, spend less time on this insane bullshit. It can't be healthy. But uh, the NIP report's going to get done. That's, I'm committed to that because the one we got sold by ESIC, I think, was, was very unsatisfying. Thanks for your continued support, Foreign Gamer. It's great to see you. Uh, Jonathan, $10. Yo, Rich, what a final, like, quick one, my mate. Think it's reasonable to put sources in the fridge. What a wrong and um, yeah. Listen, it depends on the sauce, uh, but yeah, I'm kind of with you. I, I think you know people who put hot sauce in the fridge that boils my piss. That's unreasonable as fuck. Like you just do not need to do that at all. Um, you know, I'm maybe ambivalent on ketchup. Maybe. What do you think, Sam? Nah, ketchup cupboard, in the fridge? But cupboard, cupboard, cupboard. It's too cold and but mayo yeah, fridge. Yeah, ketchup, yeah. No, I cupboard. agree with you. You don't want a, you don't want a really cold sauce on warm chips, for example. Yeah. It ruins it. Fucks it. Yeah. So I, I. So hopefully your friend will see the error of his ways. Uh, you know. Um, but but some people again. It's like I've told you throughout this stream, Jonathan. Some people are morons, mate. And you just got to do what you can. You just got to work around the moron. Become one with the moron. Uh, Brohim one two dollars again. Good to see you back, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks for the entertainment all these days during the major. Great content with a lot of interesting people. Uh, though, to be honest, I was I was listening to you guys and enjoying it. 
but I swiped Tinder instead of Map 2 for this major final. <laughs> Much love. I don't blame you, mate. Fucking hell. I'd rather be going out and having some fucking depressing, regretful Tinder sex than watching that final. Like, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, so thanks for your continued support over uh, the, the uh, duration of the stream. Tiny Pickle, good to see you back. $2. Love the No Majors Club. Unfortunate those assholes, Duncan, Momo, and Anders had to get jobs, though. Uh, watch some live when I could, but getting through all the VODs now. Sorry for sending you a guy, uh, a video of a guy fisting an elephant. I forgive you. I forgive you. Vince was happy with it, though, so that's all that really matters. Um, and, uh, yeah, listen, it could have been different. The reality is I'm not regretful uh, about how it went down because, obviously, we went to bat. I think, once again, we've proven Moses and Anders doing that final, which, if you remember, Star Ladder weren't even going to hire these guys. What's your fucking plan? What were you going to do? What was going to happen? Right, like, Moses and Anders are two of the finest commentators we've got in any fucking esport in the world uh and they should be doing finals anders is the official voice of uh of counter-strike he's been there since the beginning um and uh you know i'll always rather have him in the fucking stadium i'll always rather have moses in the stadium i'll always rather have duncan on the desk than have them here as much as i love them and it would benefit me to have them because that's where they fucking belong that's where they should be and any tournament organizer that overlooks them is a fucking idiot it, it, you know the end so it fixed itself in the end but think about what the major would have been like without those guys and understand that was a very realistic possibility that we were staring at. The No Majors Club would have been lit, but the Major itself would have sucked. And that's not the way around I want to do things, ever. So, um, thanks for your support. Uh, and obviously, thanks to Star Ladder for fucking actually developing some common sense. Uh, $1 from Sam. Spam this cart if Rich Huff's farts. And then Dust Moret's imaginary girlfriend, $1, spam this cart if Rich Huff starts. I think maybe they're the same account, guys. Yeah, I, think, I think Dust Moret's imaginary girlfriend is Sam. Um, so who knew? <laughs> right. Anyway, that's all the donations. One last uh, quick whip round because obviously... Oh, and Real Hands Mole Man just did a $2 donation. Thanks, Anders, for hosting No Majors Club. I'm a true fan of yours. Signed, NIP fan. Yeah, indeed. Uh, it's always good to get confused for Anders. So listen... One last uh, whip round just to let you know that we want it. we've we already set a record uh, for the channel in terms of subs. And that's mainly due to the generosity of some insane gifters. You know, we joke, we call them oil printers or whatever. The reality is it isn't lost on me who you are, you know. Uh, you might just be a combination of letters on the internet in a Twitch chat, but I know what you are is really a fucking fully three-dimensional person that exists, that goes to work, works hard to make that money, and then to basically encourage me to create the content as some form of endorsement, you decide to share some of your hard-earned money with me. That's never going to be lost on me. Like, what a powerful gesture that is. What it says about what I do, what it says about you as a person, what it says about what we do. So to all the people that donated and got us up to 4,544 subscribers on this channel, a channel record. I can't thank you enough. There aren't words because, like I say, I, we're all out there. We're all grinding. We're all doing what we, we're all trying to make a living in this life. And when we come together, and we have this collected generosity, this collected community, it's a very special thing indeed. Thanks as well, Mr. Compass. You're one of the guys I'm talking about. Twenty-five gifted subs. But obviously as well, I don't want to. I'll miss people out if I go through the names. But S L N X C Jin for Akusu. There's just Boromir lives. There's uh, Namaritz. There's like so many guys that have like donated hundreds and hundreds of subs to this channel, uh, and it means a lot. Right, because we're all better off together, um, sharing what we can when we can. I'm never the type of guy you don't have to do that to be here. You don't have to do that to be part of the community. When you can, it's appreciated. I like to think that we give back as much as we possibly can to all of you guys. Um, and if there's anything that we can do more to reward that, we're absolutely interested in hearing uh, from you guys. So thanks again. It's been a great experience for me. I've actually enjoyed doing the No Majors Club. Um, I enjoy it every time it comes around. I hope that stuff in the future doesn't prevent us from doing it. I think 
community streams like this are important to the scene and the fabric of the scene and Flom should have been able to do it and War Owl should have been able to do it and everybody who wants to do it should have been able to do it. Um, so hopefully we're going to be back in about six months, but we'll wait and see. Watch this space. Whatever happens, we'll think of a way. We'll think creatively outside of the box. Final thanks. Uh, obviously, everybody who came on the No Majors Club. I thought we had some great guests this time around. I know some of the players who said they would come by didn't. Obviously, we didn't get JW. We didn't get Carrigan. Uh, we didn't get Rush. Um, don't worry. I'm, they're all on a little fucking post-it note, right? Next time, you fuckers, I'll get them. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll, do, we'll probably do some content with them to sort of make up for it. Maybe a Richard Lewis show. Maybe some interviews over on the Rivalry channel. We'll figure it all out. Uh, but obviously what makes the No Majors Club what it is is the regulars, the people that turn up every day, get up bright and early to basically shoot the shit and do what we used to do back when Counter-Strike first came out. We still got some of them in the channel. Seaside, Vince, Jackie, can't thank you guys enough uh, for giving up your time to be here and and, and, and to you know make, make it enjoyable for me as well as the stream. Obviously, Flom, a regular. Davey, a regular. Um... You know, dust every day, his perfect streak, even when he's getting so much poontang. <laughs> even when he is balls deep in paradise, dust is fucking rocking up and joining us via satellite to just come here. Um, also as well, uh, so, and if I've missed any names off, I'm sure I have. Uh, uh, Pollen was another regular, Scoots, Alchemist, all of the No Majors Club. You all know who you are. Uh, and all of the special guests. There's one other thing as well. Um, obviously, some people couldn't make it because they were they were at the major. But we were doing all these fun little musical things. We actually got sent a message by someone who was working the major who did a song for us. We had a message from James Banks, didn't we, Sam? Yeah, here it is. He sent in a song. Oh, sorry, you weren't prepared for this, were you? Oh, are you muted, by the way? People, pe yeah, yeah, don't be muted. Don't be muted. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so, yeah, we did. We had, we, we had, um, we had James Banks basically send in a, a, a message because everybody's <laughs> been doing these songs. Hey, keep building it. I'll tell you what I'm writing, yeah. but you're going to fill it. So, uh, I am. I've done, it, I've done it a while. So, obviously, you know, we had, uh, we had again, somebody I really got to give a shout out to was Mange2B. Mange2B recorded two songs from scratch, the No Majors Club, uh, back in the game, the official theme tune. And uh, obviously, it also did a follow up, the Big Dave Hype Train. We're going to try and think of something to do with Mange. Um, we're going to try, and I, I don't even know what we're going to do with this guy. He's too fucking talented to just be giving us songs for free. So I'm going to be pushing him and like talking about maybe him doing some commissions for some of the tournament organizers, I think could be a good use of his right. talents. But we're going to keep him around. But you know, we also had, um, what was the name of the dude that did the karaoke? Karaoke? Yeah, you remember the guy who sang? Oh, the first guy yeah, before me yeah, did yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Coolio Index, McDoodle, was it? Or Coolio McDoodle, yeah, yeah. Index was it Coolio was the McDoodle? Did the deep fake, yeah. I think it was Coolio yeah, McDoodle. Yeah, yeah. Shout, shout out to him, Coolio McDoodle. He, he got the musical ball rolling and Mange 2B knocked it out the fucking park. And of course, yeah, Red Eye doing his Christmas album. But now, for, for your consideration, James Banks has submitted this freestyle rap. I'm fucking, I'm, I'm, can't wait for this. Wednesday morning, I'm shopping in Harrods and I go to go to Christie and Dior. This is different from before. Time, this is last time it's before. You pussy girl, you pussy girl, the whole pussy making me say. Right. I don't think that was James Banks, actually, guys. I think I think I think somebody says somebody says Wait. it's a troll there, and uh, we're going to get to the bottom of who it was, and uh, we're going to deal with them appropriately because that's not very, <laughs> that's not very appropriate, is it? For, for, especially when we're trying to end the show. So, you know, 
that's just not cool. And it leaves a bit of a sour note, really, to end on. We were all building up to all that nice, positive stuff, and then that's gone and happened. I'm very disappointed sometimes with, with people. Anyway, uh, yeah, uh, it's been banter. I think we'll play D- Dust of the Rodent Hunt a one more time before we go as well, Sam. And then we'll play out with uh, with the Mange 2B song, uh, with the DJ Sam remix. Special shout-out to my long-term partner, Sam, as well. I don't mean sexual, but who knows? Maybe <laughs> who maybe you'll go maybe there. Maybe one day if we need to spice Yeah, yeah up exactly. The, uh, maybe a little could blossom. Sam made my job super easy by pressing all the buttons. He's a guy who, um, you know, he's always in the, you know, the the background. Um, I thought his, the production value for this was fucking great, and Sam put all that extra work in. Shout out to Griff as well for helping with the graphics and uh, Bullski, the the other Welsh legend around these parts. Your your combine efforts made something special. This was this was great, uh, and now it's over. Till next time. Love all of you guys for dropping by the stream. Stick around until the end so you can go and raid Flom's channel. We're going to have a quick blast of Dust the Rodent Hunter. Some of Mange 2B's work. And then we're going to end the stream. Love to you all. We'll see you next time on the No Majors Club. I'm feeling rodents all around me. I'm eating fish heads in the sun. I'm four foot nine, a legal dwarf. Yo, Liz Noob's career is gone. I'm the dust, the four foot dust, the rodent hunter.
Sozo is come back. Chewie's off. Sea Life's come back. Happy landing. <laughs>